customers, so you'll have to order more than water. If you're broke, go somewhere else. Fifty dumplings. Is it a deal? Huh? You feed me, and I'll take care of those guys for you.
and that's why you've just got to cover it, man. You have to put a cover on it. You can't not put a cover on it when you're doing those things. You've got to do it. It's just the thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you, uh, you learn from these mistakes, but you've now, got to put a cover on it. Yeah, now I, I got I to gotta believe you. I, I made a mistake, and um, that one's going to come back to haunt me for uh, upwards of 18 years, Jay. Yeah, you're going to feel that one. You're going to feel it. Yep, absolutely. All um, right, hello everyone in chat currently. Nice slippery repeat with the uh, the nine months of subs. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Get my my double barrel thumbs up. That's a patented technique, by the way. All rights reserved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, undercover brother on a four month streak as well. Thank you, dude. Very very nice. Man, so many people using the highlight message thing. <clears throat> Oh yeah, we need to change the setting on that. To... I think it's that's like 170 or something. 170 by the looks of it. Yeah. Interesting. I think. Uh, I think on I was watching Nathan's stream earlier on because he was building a J01, and I think his is nice. set to like 2000. So. Yeah. Well, how many? How, I don't even understand how the point system works. Do you just do you get it by watching, or do you just get a set amount every day? Yeah. Or... So uh, the the more you watch the cha a channel, the more points that you get. So uh, but you have to be watching it or have it live on in the browser window, um, and then every now and again you get like a small bonus. So like for every fifteen minutes watch, you might get I don't know twenty points a minute, for example. And then after fifteen minutes, it might give you a bonus of hundred points because you've you've watched for that long. Um, and then the more points you get, the more uh, posts you can put with uh, the highlighted text that you can see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, is there oh, is there other stuff you can do besides just highlighting messages? That's as far as I've got into it. I've been, got to be honest. Uh, I haven't looked any further into it. So yeah, uh, right. Fizzkey, thank you very much with a twenty eight month streak of subscriptions. Twenty eight months, man. Wow, that's, that's huge. That's 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 pretty OG. It's almost as uh, as far back as it goes. Um, is it is it Captain Schwa that has the longest? I think, or he's one of the longest, isn't he? I think he. He is the longest yet. So I mean, Talk Clack has. We started. We started. We've always streamed on Twitch, and obviously, we started toward towards the end of uh, 2016. But we didn't get our Twitch affiliate until um, after our first year. That's when we got our Twitch affiliate. That's when we got our sponsors. So that, that's when uh, that's when people were able to start um, subscribing to us. So yeah, it's about. Uh, I mean, it's about three years back almost. Wow. Crazy, crazy. I guess not three. Like two, two, two and a half. I guess. Yeah, cause, yeah, cause to three years since we've got our Twitch affiliate would be in August of this year. So yeah, about roughly two and a half years. Which... Oh, nice. We've got this hype train thing coming up as well. Level two hype train. Sub gift or use bits to get to the next level. We're at forty percent. What the heck? I'm I have... okay. I'm way too old for this kind of stuff, and I'm not even that old. Four minutes left. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've, I don't know. Current hype trend top supporters is Undercover Brother. Nice. Okay, I, this is new to me, guys. I've never seen this before. I don't but even know what any of this means. So I, I think that the more people that gift, sub, or use bits will increase the hype train level. And the more that happens, the more emotes apparently we unlock. We get some level 2 emotes, uh, which are Bigfoot emotes, apparently, if we unlock that. Nice. Oh, Interesting. Okay, well, anyone continuing on the uh, the level 2 hype train, thank you so much. <laughs> we appreciate Thanks, it either way. Um, oh, oh, we just hit 100%? What the five, heck? Jayshev gifted five tier 1 subs as well. So we had a few subs in there. So Talisman Solutions subbed uh, for 16 months. Oni Grundy subscribed for, subscribed for 15 months. CRD subscribed for 4 months. Eskimojo subscribed for nine months and said, "We out here." Reminder to consider Catlitch, of course. Hey, wait, wait for the new stock. Wait for the new stock. You might be surprised. And then Jay Shuff gifted five uh, tier one subs as well. So thank you very much. That's uh, seventy he's gifted now in the channel. That's Holy awesome. Jesus! Thank you so much, all of you. That is that is very very kind of you. Also, uh, yeah. Mountain Blocks donating two hundred and twenty two bits and Switch Keys AU donating five hundred bits. I went a donating wow. sixteen bits. Very nice. Thank you so much, oh, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank now, you. We, we we hit that level level two really really uh, quickly there. I didn't even. I'm still I'm still <laughs> reading what it does, but uh, I, I imagine it can't be a bad thing. So we're, we're already fifty percent into level three. This is crazy. I feel like I shouldn't be paying attention to this because it takes away from the stream itself. Perhaps perhaps we can pay a little bit of attention to it in the um, uh, in in you know this pre-show, uh, but maybe not in the actual show. That's where it's going to struggle. Talisman Solutions with the one hundred and eleven bits. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Jeremy fifty seven says, "Where's the channel emotes? We will get some channel emotes. We are working on them. They're they're coming. They're coming. Yeah, they're coming. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put out a uh, a Google form I think soon to figure out what people want to see as, uh, for example, the um, sub emote. So that way, instead of it just being a star, it can be I don't know something a little bit more interesting. Um, yeah. Just try to get like an idea of what you guys actually want to see because I am." I am admittedly pretty bad at Twitch emotes and uh, things of that nature. So I, I never really use them or anything. So it, it's we, all kind of a new to, thing to me. We need to do like little gifts that play and stuff like that when people sub and stuff like that. We need to get better at it. We really, really do. Yes. We like to try and call out to you guys that we see them, but we miss some of them. And if we had like notifications on where it pops up on screen and so, we know we'd see more. We just want to make sure that they fit with the theme of Top Pack. So we will get there. We will do it. Um, and yeah, we'll work on it. Yeah. Absolutely. Tal's been donating another 111 bits. Thank you so much. And Jay Chef and with Jay 500 Chef, bits. Oh. He just gifted like five subs, didn't he? Five and, subs and 500 hype bits. Thank you a, very much. What a monster. What a beast. Thank you so much, man. Tal is, been... Tal is man with another 111. <laughs> you know what I think is happening? I think everyone's just trying to slowly but surely donate to get us to the next level just in time. So we have to keep mentioning it. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's just about there, 99% now. Uh, Sleek Keyboards, thank you very much for uh, subscribing with Twitch Prime as well. Uh, Vogon PT says we should get an Ock emote after our discussion about my Ock mug last, last week. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what's kind of funny is uh, I was, so like I mentioned before the stream when we did um, the Clipe giveaway form, one of the pieces in mm. there was uh, any feedback for Talk Clack. It wasn't required, obviously. But, you know, some people left some positive comments or some constructive criticism, things of that nature. So all good stuff. Yeah. But uh, what one person was like, Brian is a big bully. Bring back the Ock mug or whatever. Like, and I was like, I was in favor of the Ock. It wasn't. Mug. It <laughs> wasn't you that complained. It, was yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't Brian that. It wasn't Brian that asked me to not use it. He he never mentioned it. Um, Brian was very supportive of the Ock mug. I but, always uh, support yeah. Jay's Ock. I mean, whatever, yeah, whenever yeah. I can <laughs> see it, I I am just always in awe of Jay's Ock. <laughs> it's, it's it's quite masterful. Man, we're almost we're, we've we've just done we're on level five now. Oh, that's my, crazy! You guys so, are crazy. So just 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 catch up. Warrenified, uh, the reaming goat. Uh, thank you very much for your subscriptions. Um, Lumens continued the uh, the gifts that they got from Flex. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Um, A1A gifted five tier one subs as well. Thank you very much. That's now six they've gifted in the channel. Thank you very much, dude. Uh, and Mr. Petrov gifted five tier one subs as well. So I think we're now like on level 11 or something so thank you very much guys this is crazy what's i don't even on? i don't even understand what's happening right now you guys are wild well, uh, this, is, this is the final level keep the hype going until the clock runs out so we're almost at the highest level uh acrimony as well subscribe for two months currently on a one month streak what does the final um, level get you <laughs> frosty kk with 100 bits i don't know what does the final level get you does it tell us does it tell it us? looks like a lot get, of a lot of emotes we get, oh we get lo loads of unicorn emotes and uh, oh, so we we get one of the level emotes for each train. So this is train number one that we've done on the stream. So you get one emote from each level, and then if you get five trains done, I think you get all five. Okay, I've just each. opened I've just opened up the actual Twitch page so I can read about it after the stream and figure out what we need to <laughs> what we need to start We're doing so with this. We should, I, we, we, should <laughs> we should know what this is doing. Yeah, this is this is crazy. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, uh, thank you very much to Eski Mojo and Jeff Leppard. Eski Mojo gifted a tier one sub. Uh, Jeff Leppard subscribed for seven months. This is hi friends, uh, hi friends back to you. Thank you very much for that. Cheese subscribed with Twitch Prime. A one A gifted another one, uh, gifted another sub as well. Mister Hink subscribed with Twitch Prime. Guys, this uh, is crazy. Uh, eventually, we're gonna have to do the show, right, Jay? <laughs> we, we, yeah, we're gonna have to do the show in a minute. We're, oh we're, shit, poggers. This is, this is some poggers. It says level 5 complete. We did it. I don't know what it really means, but we did it, guys. I have Good no job. idea what it did. Level 5. You there guys, we go. You guys did it. Very, very nice. 154%, uh, so we, whatever that means. Yeah, so we just uh, subscribed to, uh, for five people as well. Thank you very much, dude. Talisman gave another 111 bits. Wow. Yeah. You guys, uh, are, you guys are wild. <laughs> yeah, so this is that, crazy. Does that just happen, like, every stream now? Is that... Is that how this works? I don't know. I need gonna, to read up on it. I, I, yeah. I, I opened um, the tab. I'm going to read about that after the stream today so I can try to figure this out. Thank you all so much for all the all the subs, the gifted subs, and the donated bits, guys. That is very, very kind of you. Uh, we, should probably, really cool. we should probably start the show. 
Um, as much as I would love to just see bits and subs roll in and continue to talk about them and, and how awesome you guys are. I, just before we do, I think that that gives us a little bit of a taste of what like a 24-hour stream struck subathon might feel like, which would be really cool. So I really enjoyed that. So maybe we need to, to, to dust off those old plans and uh, and get that sorted yes. ASAP. Yes. Uh, and our Bigfoot says Brian's beard is getting wild. Yeah, I haven't had it trimmed and I don't know. I, I, it's 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 been a couple months. Um, Vogon PT says Ock emote for the win. So I guess I guess we gotta find an Ock emote. That means we're doing it right. Yeah, that, I think a lot of people would like that. Anyways, I'm gonna roll the intro. We're gonna officially start the show, and we're gonna talk about some keyboard and keyboard accessories. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are, fellow keyboard nerds. Thank you very much for joining us today. It is, well, for most of you, it is still Thursday, the 9th of January. For me, it's the 10th of January. Uh, but welcome to Top Pack. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about keyboards, surprisingly. Uh, we're going to talk about switches. We're going to talk about key sets. Uh, and we're also going to do some questions and answers towards the end of the stream, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, and uh, Brian, how are you feeling this week? How are things going for you? Is everything well? Uh, yeah, today's actually going pretty well for me always happy to uh to do the show on thursdays of course we have a pretty nice news doc today it's not terribly long it's not terribly short uh but it's very impressive just like some other things that uh that jay has uh in his um collection so anyways <laughs> let's <laughs> <laughs> nice arc there jay nice arc how are you doing today though uh, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I feel like I might be starting to get a little bit ill, you know, just woke up after having a nap before the show. I feel a little bit groggy, but I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. The uh, the gifts, the subs, everything else has really cheered me up. Uh, just since we rolled the intro, I think we've seen another uh, 200 bits from Nebulin, 111 bits from Talisman. Geo gifted 10 more subs. Uh, Nebulin gave another 300 bits with using the new uh, Warhol emotes that we've un 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 unlocked as well. Um, uh, Crunchy Meatloaf gave another 100 bits. It's a great username, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's a great username. Ten more bits from Jeremy57. Uh, Noxygen subscribed with Twitch Prime as well. Uh, 100 bits from CD. Another 400 bits from Crunchy Guys. Meatloaf. <laughs> Another 100 bits from CD. Uh, wow. Um, it's, yeah. I feel, like, I feel like this isn't a normal episode right now. I feel like this is some kind of like weird alternative reality subathon that we're doing, and I just didn't know about it. Yeah, this is, this is, this is unusual. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, loads of hype unicorn bits coming in from Jeremy57, Nebulon, Frothy KK. Uh, thank you very much for those guys. This, uh, this is awesome. I, I cannot keep up. <laughs> I, can't, I just can't keep up yeah. with the bits. We're just gonna we're just gonna be sat here for an hour just going and A one A gifted the sub and so and so did did uh, did some bits and so and so did some more bits and yeah we're just gonna be here all all evening doing that it's, yeah, it's awesome absolutely. thank you so much for the support guys genuinely it means the world to us when we see this this is this has really made my night thank you very much guys it's so much fun and it's just really nice to to see you guys support us this way it's really nice Nathan Alpha Man with one two three four five hundred bits as well thank you very much uh, those lovely unicorn bits there as well thank you. <laughs> Redbeard says, says bits and subs this week are longer than last week's keycap IC section. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it true. Is, yeah. We had like two key set topics last week. It was it was ridiculous. We have quite a few more this week though, uh, for better or yeah. worse. But yes, thank you all so much for the bits and the subs. You guys are absolutely wonderful. We could not ask for better viewers. I know it sounds cliche as hell, but honestly, like this is pretty wild. Yeah, thank you very, very much for the support, guys. We really, really appreciate it. It means, means so much to us. So nice of you. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. So we're going to start out with a quick, and I do mean quick, mail call this week. Then we're going to talk about a quick announcement, and then we're going to roll into our news doc as always. And like Jay mentioned, we have a and a at the end of the stream that we do every single week. So if you have questions, make sure to, you know, maybe... Uh, marinate those in your head a little bit and get those in at the Q&A at the end of the stream as always. So, Jay, what did you get from the mail this week? Because I got uh, a grand total of nothing. Wow. Yeah, I got two things. Well, I actually had one last week, but I couldn't find it, so uh, I think I'd left it in the kitchen or something. So uh, I just want to show this off. The first one is I finally, finally, after selling my set a couple of years ago, uh, and really regretting it, Mr. Nathan Kim has it now, I finally got uh, another set of PPS keycaps. 
So I absolutely adored these, and um, uh, I think uh, I, I made a trade, and uh, I really regretted doing it, and then they ended up going to uh, to Nathan in the end. Uh, but yeah, as I say, I finally got some PPS keycaps in. Ooh, the, so the black like, ones if, even, right? Yeah, brown? these are the black ones. Yeah, no, these are the black ones, nice. uh, including including the ISO keys, which aren't included in all of them. So, uh, uh, Socialite uh, was really, really kind. Has been looking out for me for a while on the uh, Asian forums, the Korean forums, and things like that to try and find me a set. Uh, he did manage to find me a set, and it came. Uh, I think I think I got it last Thursday, but I just hadn't brought it up to the office. So, yeah, really, really happy uh, for that. Uh, the other thing I finally got as well uh, was a box that came, and I wasn't sure what it was at first, because it was all wrapped with bright orange tape. Um, but uh, it came with a little label on the inside that said J Special, um, <laughs> which was quite interesting. Um, and uh, it also came with some lube, so some uh, lube. And what this is, is this is the Lubrigante, but it's, uh, it's a Wonderland PCB. Um, you probably can't see that through the reflective material, but it's the Alice style uh, laser cut case. So um, I'm going to hold this up because it's all in parts. But uh, yeah, it's the Lubrigant, but this is the wild card edition. So it's got like an angled base. It's got two different base colors, including some bright orange ones to, to match my car, which is what one of the notes says. It's uh, nice. in light of my car. Uh, tons of different greases and things like that. So. Um, yeah, tons of stickers as well. Loads of stickers uh, saying soon.tm. Uh, oh, what? Uh, really? Cool. Yeah, soon. Soon. Look, how cool is that? Who? That's, that's quite possibly one of the best stickers we've we've had in the community. Who? Uh, uh, who was the vendor for this? Who did Home Roco. Home Roco. Home Roco. Yeah. Um, so I like, yeah, uh, I like those even <laughs> he even I'll send you one because I've got to send you that uh, that uh, Typex as well. So he uh, even sent me these little lube brushes. It's probably not going to focus on these, but uh, little lube brushes as well to try out. So these have got like little cotton buds on the end. Uh, they go with all the lube. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I got a little fry badge in here that, from Futurama. If... That's pretty. I, I as someone that absolutely adores Futurama, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and I got another one which is. <laughs> the, uh, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, yeah. So I got loads and loads of stuff, and then there's a bag of bolts and all sorts of bits in there. So I've been waiting a little while for this. Um, I, I, I honestly thought all the lube ganses are chipped, and I didn't know where mine was. But uh, I think the the wild card ones have just taken a little bit longer to produce because they're slightly different mm. to the uh, actual group buy ones. So they've got some extra parts in there, trying to sub out for round two. Um, so I was really surprised when I opened that and had all this extra in there. So Home Roco, if you're watching, thank you very much. If you're not, um, I'll probably reach out to you and say thank you for the bits uh, in the next couple of days anyway. I didn't get a chance to open it when it arrived a couple of days ago other than to just have a quick look. It was only earlier on today that I actually went through everything that's in the box. I was really surprised to see all that in there. So Home Roco, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Really nice package. Um, um, yeah, I look forward to building the board as well. Interesting. Yep, very, very nice. Uh, shout out to Cozy Fanatuti, who just <coughs> subbed a tier one for nine months. And he says, haven't caught a roundup in a bit. Beard getting noise, playa. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I, I'm probably going to trip it up pretty soon here. I've just been lazy. Um, I need to get my hair cut, too, because my hair is just looking so dumb right now. <laughs> um, but, you know, people like seeing me look dumb anyways, so that's kind of how things go. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, so is that is that all you got this week, Jay? Uh, yeah, I think that was everything that I got this week. I, I can't remember getting anything else, so yeah, that's everything I got. All right, awesome. So quick announcement. As uh, you might have remembered, last week we did open up a giveaway for a Clipe 2019 edition. Yes, I know I said that wrong, but it's just habitual at this point. Clip, um, Clipper. Yeah, cl Clipper. Uh, it's funny because, you know, I've actually spent time with Leandrin in person talking about it, and I still, and I, I've heard him say it a dozen times in person, and I still don't say it right. And uh, and, and the thing is, you, you say you, you say Clipe, and then I end up saying Clipe because you're saying it, and I know it's wrong. I categorically know it's wrong, and I still end up saying it as well. And then I have to correct myself. I've basically ruined uh, that board just because of the way I talk, and I will never be sorry enough for that. However, we are giving one <laughs> away, and it is one of the nicer, fancier versions. Dark grey, it has the removal post, so you can do uh, you know a four post, a little bit more flexible type of style. It comes with some custom cut foam. Uh, I believe we also have a PCB that goes along with it, right, Jay? We got a WT60D. Um, yes. 
which is also something that you can get on Mechanisk, and it is an amazing PCB, I think, personally. So yeah, yeah. awesome awesome little giveaway. No no restrictions. Uh, if we can ship it to you, we will ship it to you. Uh, we had that giveaway open for about a week. We closed it uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific just before the stream, and I RNG'd a winner. And with zero suspense at all, the winner is Noxygen. So you did have to be in the Discord to uh, to win this, and he is. So very, very nice. Awesome stuff. And we will get that out to you uh, pretty darn soon, because it's actually in our possession. Is he, is he watching? I'm sure I saw him watching. Uh, I think he subbed earlier, but watching. I could be wrong. Yeah. Noxygen, if you're watching, dude, congratulations, man. We're really, really happy to be sending you this. So, yeah. Yes, very nice. And just in case, uh, you know, a lot of you people are nerds and you wanted to know your math and your odds to win, there were 238 entries to that. So, bam. Those were your odds. Nice. Anyways, yep, shout out to Noxygen. We'll be reaching out to you after the show to get your shipping information, and then we're going to get you that Klippa. 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 Klippa, yeah. <laughs> Klippy! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to go with Clypey. That's great. Anyways, without further ado, let us move on to the news doc, Jay. Absolutely. So, first up this week, we've got uh, a board that's coming back a little bit. So, this board's been talked about for a long time. Um, it's been highly wanted for a long time. I was going to say a different word there, but I'll, I'll modulate my language because this is Twitch and I don't want to get into... Terms of service issues, but this this board is the GSKT zero zero, or the gasket, or the goose or you may have heard it under a number of different names. Do people and it's a, do people call it the goose kit? Because that's amazing. Yeah, the goose kit. Yeah, yeah. The the the. I don't know why, but I've I've heard it called that in real life at meetups and things as well. So yeah, the goose kit. That's amazing. Um, so as as in if you if you put the two O's the two zeros and count them as O's in in GSKT, it'd be goo skit. Yeah. So yeah, that's where it comes from. Not not goose kit, goose kit. Um, so yeah, so uh, this this board has been around for a little while. I think it was uh, not last, uh, no, sorry, not not last year in 2019. It was the middle of 2018 when this board came out. I think towards the end of summer, and uh, it was kind of a, an introduction uh, for the Western communities into gasket mounts. And I, I think I'm quite right in saying, Brian, I'm sure you'd agree on this, that this board was uh, uh, by Weston was the one that reinvented. Um, gasket mounts for the community and for the hobby because we hadn't seen this since the OTV days uh, they weren't really thought of and this kind of reinvigorated that kind of momentum and innovation in gasket mounting on keyboards yeah yeah absolutely so, <clears throat> sorry go on so in yeah, I was just going to say, so in terms of how this works, guys, uh, you've, you've seen it before, you've seen it on other boards now since then, but it's basically uh, an O-ring that sits between the PCB and plate, so if you've got the plate, PCB underneath it, the O-ring goes around the edges of that, uh, and then the plate has got tabs on it, which you can see connected to the uh, the slots on the top case, which we'll talk about shortly, uh, and as you screw the top plate, uh, the top case into the, uh, the bottom, uh, of the case, it pushes all of that together, sandwiches the uh, the plate against the O-ring, and then provides compression against the O-ring, uh, provided some flexibility on your typing field underneath the alphas. Uh, and now I've tried two of these. Now the the picture that Brian's displaying right at the minute, I've tried those two specific builds. Those are Chris Swires in Chris Swires Kitchen. I've I've sat at that table at that spot. And Iconic on both of those tables. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, you can actually see in this picture as well, just to point out, and this is going way off at a tangent here, but everyone thinks Chris's table is white and wood. It's not. You can see here that it's categorically grey, and it's just lighting tricks that make it look like it's white, <laughs> but it's absolutely grey block and wooden block. And it is one table, it's not two tables. Anyway, um, and <laughs> I tried the, I tried this board when I went to visit Chris at the end of 2018. So just before I joined Top Clack, I posted some pictures of a bit of a mini meetup that Chris and I did. Just as to, I took maybe 10 or 15 boards down, he got 10 or 15 out. And we just spent a day typing through. And this board was actually one of the highlights of the day, just uh, uh, trying it out. Now, I only tried the HHKB version layout. I haven't tried any others because that was the only top that Chris had. But I was really interested in it. And it actually partially inspired the JL1 designs, which started around that time um, and then went into production the following, uh, the following spring. So, yeah, so that's kind of the history of the board. <clears throat> Copies a lot of old style boards, OTD. I think you know more on that side than I do, Brian. But. Uh, it's a, it's a traditional mount scene in the Asian communities that then kind of dropped and waned. The the, the gasket kind of the, uh, from Weston kind of brought that back to major appeal. And then we've since then, we've seen a whole raft of different implementations of gaskets in boards. And it's kind of reinvigorated that innovation in the community. 
Yeah, it's really actually interesting to think about. And we were talking about it a little bit before the stream as well. Is that the and I'm gonna I'm quickly I'm gonna preface this by Eskimojo in the chat says is the internal still big secret? That's because if uh, any of you maybe don't remember during the private group by that was I don't know what a year ago two years ago at this point of the Gasket Zero Zero, part mm -hmm. of the requirement to actually get in the very limited private run was that you could not talk about the internals of this board. It was actually supposed to be uh, kind of a secret. It was supposed to be a very closed private sort of thing. And other people that were outside the group by were not supposed to know about the mounting solution, which is really interesting because uh, the mounting solution, like Jay mentioned, is very, very similar, if not <coughs> practically identical to the OTD356 Mini, which is a very, very classic, very sought after and amazing keyboard in our community that's from 2008, 2008, 2009, era and you know that's uh it really is an amazing board i've typed on one it's it's awesome and it's interesting to think about that otd did a very successful gas mount design in the 356 mini and then we just completely moved away from that as an entire community back in 2010 and nobody really did gas mount ever again until pretty recently in the last couple years when gas mount started making that return so i yeah. i think this this board is actually really interesting in a lot of ways that being one of them um, but let's talk about the specs for a second. So, um, sure. this uh, this group is going to consist of uh, a few different things. You're going to have your color choice between black, red, gray, and silver. Pretty normal stuff there. There's going to be a 200 unit cap, which doesn't sound like a lot, but... Or actually, no, I'm sorry. It does sound like a fair amount. But I feel like with as many people that are uh, going to be wanting to buy this board at the price it's at, that's going to be uh, pretty fast. That's going to go quick. This is still going to be one that you're going to have to be really on the ball to join. Um, yeah. Also because, very interestingly enough, this one has a two-unit limit per person. So, um, you know, some group buys only have a one limit. Some are completely open. This one has two. So I imagine there will be quite a few people buying two as well. And uh, there's no hard date when this opens yet, but it is uh, theorized to open on the 20th of this month. That is the uh, the current goal. 7U spacebar only, uh, yeah. as far as MX is concerned. As far as MX is concerned. You can actually use um, an AEK bottom row on this as well if you're going the Alps route, which is, I think, a 6.5 spacebar or something. It is, um, yeah. It's yeah, exactly very, like, yeah. very different kind of uh, layout. But, of course, that's Alps. Um, and it also supports big-ass enter, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, from an Alps perspective, I think that's to, to help support the, uh, the old Alps key capsets, Yeah, but yeah, definitely. It is really and uh, unlike the private run, this one is actually going to have um, some bump-on cutouts on the bottom, which is uh, a nice touch. But what's really interesting about this is actually the price. So the price is pretty competitive here. It starts at $225. That just gives you the case, though. Uh, it'll cost you 25 more for a plate, 25 more for a PCB, and 25 more for shipping. So for about $300 US shipped, you get the full kit with the plate, with the PCB, and with the case. So pretty attractive price for a, a nice, simple gasket mount 60. It, it, it is, and it's a, it's a really, really simple design, which really helps to get that low price as well. It's just two pieces, there's no brass weight, there's nothing like that. It's really just quite simple. Just in terms of the plates as well, there's two plates on offer. You can have either a half plate, which is the $25 one I mentioned, or you can have a full plate. Uh, so that's uh, the half plate means that there's no plate around the alphas. You've only got plates around the edge and around the mods that give compression on the gasket. Now, I've tried one of those. That's very, very flexible in the middle. Uh, the full plate version I've tried at Chris's house as well. That's also still flexible but uh but it's 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 much more rigid compared to the other one um uh personally i didn't i i don't like overly flexi boards usually but i actually personally preferred the half plate on this which i found really strange uh because i tend not to like uh, flexible builds um but just looking at that price again i think part of the reason why the price is so low is is, is because it is such a simple design when you actually look at it now uh, brian i did ping a link into chat a second ago i'm going to send this over to you in uh in our uh Already opening. Yeah, so so this particular link here, this does have a lot more images. So I'm just going to talk about how the mounting system works because as now there are pictures and you can see, I think it's the third or fourth picture down um, where it shows the inside of the bottom case uh, and it shows, uh, shows that up quite close. But what you can see is you can see two things on the inside of that bottom 
case, you can see a tab that's milled into the bezel around the edge, and that's where the plate sits. So the plate sits there, and that's pushed down from when the top case sits on it. So the top case itself has a little bit of a cutout as well. And as you screw the two together, it puts it down onto that long, thin tab that's cut into the bezel. Now, where the O-ring sits is underneath that tab uh, before you get to the uh, the actual switches, and the O-ring presses on these little round nubbins that stick out, and these have got a little kind of curved uh, slot grooved into them, and that's where the gasket sits. So that's what the gasket's compressing against. And as you can see, it means that the case is actually quite deep. Most PCBs have about you know 0.7, one millimeter underneath them. But you can see here that the gasket's got the 1.5 millimeter of the PCB that's going to sit below it, and then you've got you know a handful of millimeters it's actually quite the case now this does two things one it means if you've got a flexible build it's not going to stretch down to the base of the case and short out on it um i found that on on the j series boards that's part of the reason why we've got what, what i call the, the the acoustic slot in the center um, but the second thing this does as well is it actually makes this board sound really good now a lot of boards tend to not sound so great when they reduce the, the height inside but that's more about um, aesthetics and design and everything else and i think personally and this is just my personal opinion that we can actually get better acoustics by looking taking material away from underneath the pcb in play and that's the design philosophy that i've used in my board so i'm really really happy to see it here and i think because swires never showed me the internals of these because of course he was sworn to secrecy at the time so i didn't know that but i always did think that this board sounded great no matter which plate use solution you you utilize and i think that's part of the reason why so i'm a really really big fan of seeing this board come back um i think the mounting system was really unique as you said brian it was the you know it was very similar to the otd boards that we saw uh, of yesteryear and it was kind of like a long gap where where gaskets weren't really considered in terms of mounting stuff for a long time and this board came back and it actually kind of pushed it out uh into the populace again and uh, and, and made it more more appealing for innovation uh, a couple of people have mentioned in chat that it looks very similar to the unicorn mounting so it might seem so at first in the fact that it's got an o-ring around the edge and those o-rings sit on slots that that's very very similar the difference here is how the compression is done so on the unicorn it's a tray case there is no top part of the case you screw the pcb down into standoffs like you would a tray mount case and that provides the compression so the plates actually screwed down or as most people do, because the gasket's so tight, you don't even bother with the screws and you just push the damn thing in. Um, this is different in the fact that the actual plate is pushing on the gasket and the plate is being pushed down by the top and the bottom case being screwed together. So as you screw the top and the bottom case together, it's pushing the plate into the gasket, the gasket into those little standoffs, and that's giving compression uh, around the edges. So it, it, it is actually a subtle difference, but it will make a huge difference on the impact uh, in terms of sound and feel. So uh, little tweaks like that do make a big difference in boards so yeah so i think because it's such a simple design it's quite cheap to produce which is great for us to see the price um i don't think these were worth some of the aftermarket prices of five thousand dollars that people were offering because it was such a limited edition board previously i know uh, chris got some big offers and things so it was never worth that kind of money but um i do think that this is a great price and i think even if this had been 400 dollars board people would have snapped it up because it's uh it, it's really good you know and it sounds great it feels great and it was the modern you know, board that brought gaskets back to life in the community. And if you look at all the boards, you've got, you know, Tengu, you've got uh, the uh, number two, you've got the number one from Kikul boards. Um, you know, you've got the E6.5, which had similar, you've got the Unicorn we talked about a few minutes ago. I mean, there's hundreds of gaskets boards now. It just happens. So we've seen all that innovation because Weston brought this back to the community. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, from what I hear, a lot of people have been pretty excited about this one. All the people <clears> that joined the original private run that was super limited they seem to like it quite a bit um the price hard to argue with here i mean i think the only the only comparable board i think uh that could really compete with this is something like either the polaris and uh you know the idd60 which also boasts extreme value um so how do you how do you, do you think this is going to be a must buy for you jay are you going to pick one of these up or try to I, I i would like to buy one of these i uh uh, I would have, if Chris had ever wanted to sell one of his, I would have, or his two builds for it, I would have picked that up without a shadow of a doubt. I do think that the design is really simplistic. Um, I think that, like you mentioned, other budget boards like the IDB, for example, those boards are so cheap because the design is so cheap and easy to produce. There's no complexity in the case design, and we see that here. It's very much a simple 
two part case, top piece, bottom piece, not too much to mill. All of the, you know, the corners are similar angles. It's a very, very simple looking design. It's quite classic at the same time, but it's just a rectangle. You know, there's no frills, there's nothing else. You get what you see with this kind of board. The, the whole part of this is that it's supposed to look demure from the outside and the experience is supposed to speak for itself, which is exactly what we see with the IDB and other boards like that. I mean, you can see the IDBs here in the background. It's, They're all about to ship tomorrow. It's similar um, to the concept yeah. of like a sleeper car. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's a good, good analogy. It's supposed to all be about the type of feel. It, it looks, looks like simple keyboard. and mundane, but the performance is you use uh, it. what it's all about. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I am certainly going to try to pick one of these up as well. I think the price is just too tantalizing to say no to. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, <laughs> hopefully I can get in, but I, I think those 200 spots are going to go in under a minute. Um, I don't know if it'll be that quick. I mean, the the, the group buy thread, uh, sorry, the interstate thread has got five pages on within like a handful of days, which is unprecedented. It's huge, um, but I, I don't know how quick it will. will yeah, will in, go. in the uh, in the now immediately famous words of Pilot XJ, Teha Nation gonna sell this out in seconds for sure. Uh, I agree Maybe. with that. I know. I know Teha types loves his gasket, and uh, he uses he, it as a footrest on his streams, though, he, doesn't he? That's what he. He I don't puts know if, it under his table and he puts his foot on it or something. He, or he used to. He do. was. He was. I don't think he does that anymore. But regardless, I mean, I know he does have one. I know he does love it, and uh, a lot of people really like the typing test that he did with it. So I, I can imagine that uh, a lot of orders can uh, can come directly from him in a way. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I I do think this is going to sell out very fast, personally. I, I I think I'm going to be more expectative about a 15 minute time slot to fridge. You think 15 minutes, slot. really? Okay. Maybe, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say two or less. Okay. Call okay. It. We'll we'll see. We right. we will see. Uh, Wilson, you ask a really good question. Ask that in the Q and A at the end. Remind me to come back to that because I don't want to detract from the show on or from this particular board. But if you ask me that question at the end again and remind me, I will answer that in the Q and A. Yep. Absolutely. So good stuff, guys. Make sure you keep your eyes off for this one. We're looking at a potential January 20th release date, and uh, boy, I sure do hope so. All right, next up is another board I definitely have my eyes on, and this is not an interest check. This is in group buy. Currently, right now, you can buy this. This is the Tengu from Project Keyboard, and this is uh, an... I, I, I hate to call it an Alice clone or an Alice alternative, because I feel like there's so many now that... That's, it's probably just kind of disrespectful at this point. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a very similar to the Alice layout, uh, which a lot of people love. It's a little ergonomic. People are really into that. But this one, obviously, quite a different design otherwise besides the layout. So let me just give you a quick spec, so we're going to talk about this for just a moment. So you're going to get a pretty standard 7-degree angle. You're going to get a 21-millimeter front height, which is a little higher than normal. You're going to get a, por a poron-based mounting system, uh, probably very similar to the key cult design, where there's just poron strips on the top and bottom case, and you kind of just yep. put your plate on it, and then you screw your case down, and the pressure kind of just keeps it all there. Uh, key cult has been doing that very successfully. A lot of people like that. Heck, why not yeah, use it, nice. I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's going to have a sandblasted brass weight. The PCB is going to be both QMK and VIA compatible. Uh, it doesn't say, but I can presume that it's going to be USB-C. And you're going to have your color choices between black, gray, red, and polycarbonate. So how do you feel about this one, Jay? Uh, I actually really, really like the styling on this one. So I was saying to uh, to 159, who runs Project Keyboard the other day, that I actually prefer this over the Alice design because I really like that sharp corner in the middle uh, rather than the, uh, the, the the flatter uh, design that we saw in the Alice. Um, uh, but the big seller for this on me is the base. So right in that very top picture, you can see the red uh, image. And it's kind of got the... I love the finger slots that you can pick a board up with. That's a it's really big thing so for me. so sexy. I, absolutely love being able to pick a board up so any finger slots I usually like unless they're the new TX ones that are all rounded and shaped weird, don't like those but any of those nice grooves, slots a ledge, something that you can get your fingers under to pick the boards up, I always really like to see that on a board and this one is quite possibly the nicest implementation of one I've seen, so that swooping curve towards the back of the board that then becomes a nice thin line that just draws the, the, the angle of the case as it comes towards the front I'm a big, big fan of that. I think it looks great. The side profile then looks fantastic. 
Um, the whole base on its own looks great as well. So I, for the, my first thought when I looked at the base was there's far too many screws along that front bottom edge, but I actually kind of like the industrial look that that gives it. Um, and I really, really like the lettering and font choice for the Tengu brass weight to show through as well. I think it looks really, really nice. Uh, for me, this is quite possibly one of the nicest looking, as you said before, Alice clones. And I hate to give it that. Alice layout has now become popular we, in its own right. We got to have another term for yeah. it. We got to have another yeah, term. Um, well, well, we'll let the community decide on that one. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to pick something for for everyone, but uh, it, it's becoming more more of a standardised layout these days, like a sixty percent or sixty five. It's becoming standard within the community. So, um, yeah. I think this case is quite possibly one of the best implementations of it. The other part that I think is absolutely sublime about this case, and again, you can really see it on that red one, is when you look at the front edge, you can see that it's got that kind of triangle uh, V, and then as you look that V on on the triangle when it becomes to go to straight edges it becomes curved and that transition there is just so subtle so sweet and i i i cannot tell you how much i enjoy looking at that it's just really nice how this kind of almost tubular kind of design just meets up against the flush edge and it just looks great i think it looks fantastic very 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 happy to see this come to group by i think it's one of the nicest looking alice type layouts that we've seen in terms of case style um, yeah. very very ha attracted to it yeah i i completely agree i think this looks absolutely the best in terms of this particular layout i like it more than the alice i like it more uh than the osa or osa i like it more than every other alice uh, clone or alternative or comparable layout uh, in existence i think this is a real home run um, I'm definitely going to try to pick one of these up. I love that design that you were just talking about, Jay, like where the V meets uh, the edge there. Oh, it, it rounds out. So that, nice. is, that is so nice. And then uh, this back part around the uh, the back edges too, the handles effectively. I think that is th that is just sublime. Um, also, yeah. let, me, let me correct myself real quick. It does use a mini USB connection on the PS or, uh, PCB, not a uh, USB-C. So, oh, is it? Okay. I, yeah, I, I assumed it was USB-C. Okay, interesting to know. Good to know. Um, yeah, just in terms of other options as well, guys, uh, you can pick up a number of different plates for this as well. So I did post both links for the uh, the board and the plates into into chat. But the plates also come in aluminium, brass, carbon fiber, fiberglass, which is FR4, uh, uh, excuse me, polycarbonate, and POM. So you can pick up loads of different plate options for this. It may be even worthwhile picking up multiple options because you can pick a plate up between $35 and $50. So aluminium, carbon fiber, uh, a 35 uh, fiberglass is uh, $25 polycarbonate is uh, $40 and a POM is $35 as well brass being the expensive one at $50 so yeah yeah brass is the least interesting plate material out of all of these options in my opinion <clears throat> yeah I, I would agree I would agree. <laughs> I think we probably disagree in the order of the other ones but I don't probably, think we yeah. can both agree on that yeah well yeah um, I, I always go for the softest typing styles you tend to generally like the uh, the firmer typing experiences so we'd uh... yeah but I think we both agree just not metal just give us anything that's not metal and yeah, we'll be alright uh, yeah. metal plates are they're fine they're functional they're good but they're just not interesting anymore so I'm really happy to see a lot of the uh, the palm, the polycarbon, and the FR4, and the carbon fiber, and Project Keyboard in particular is really good at pushing a lot of those non-metal plates, um, as we Absolutely. as we yeah. saw on the uh, the series, which is my 2019 board of the year, and. Um, yeah, I absolutely, absolutely just love it. Uh, also, side note, just because I forgot to add it to the news doc, um, I believe Sirius uh, is now in stock at Project Keyboard. So if you missed the group buy and you wanted one, um, bam, here's your here's your option. You can pick them up now. They're in stock. All three tops available. Palm plate by default. Good stuff. Nice. We're nice. not sponsored by Project Keyboard, by, by the way. This, these are actually... This is, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not advertising this. I just... I really do like the board that much. Uh, yeah, completely, uh, completely appreciate. It. Just, uh, just looking at the uh, the plate listing as well. There's uh, a couple of other things that you can see on there that I was going to just quickly mention about the board. The very top image with the uh, the black plate on it. You can see that there's actually some uh, mounting tabs on where the top case and the bottom case sit together. So you can see that there's all the screw holes that go through, but there's actually uh, divots and there'll be corresponding pins on the top case. So aligning those two is going to be really, really nice and easy to try and get that to, to clip together nicely before you screw it together. So that's looking. 
looking good. And you can actually see how the uh, the plate mounts there on tabs, as you said, Brian, very, very similar to how the number two works, the key cut works, a number of other gasket mount boards, uh, tabs that go uh, underneath the bezel of the top and bottom case with pour and strips above and below. So very similar to when we talked about the gasket, only the gasket presses down onto an O-ring. This has compression above and below using pour on strips. So really nice to see that. Um, I think the internals look really interesting. You can also see some sneaky, uh, uh, some sneaky engravings on the weight there as well. Um, so uh, you are might there, see those. But, are there some sneaky yeah. engravings? I haven't actually looked uh, at the, the weight. Yeah, if, if if you look at some of those files and and you can just kind of see there's a sneaky sneaky little bits of text on the inside of the weight. Oh, it doesn't show you what it says. I, I see I what I see what it says. I see what it yeah, says. I think I think it says uh, the name of the uh, the designer, which is Finderworks, Finder and then Project Keyboard Project logo. Keyboard logo. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So yeah, so that's uh, a nice little additional detail as well. Yep. So very nice. You can get extra plates, extra PCBs. Uh, it comes with an aluminum plate by default. Um, but yeah, really, really cool stuff. I, are you gonna try to get one of these? I, I would love to, but if I'm getting every other board, I'm not sure I can afford all, all the boards I want to buy this month. So I would love to get one of these. I think this is unlimited as well. I don't know if... Uh, if I believe it's unlimited. On it's opened yesterday, I believe, and it closes uh, the 8th of February. So it opened for a month long. So you have a lot of time to decide, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, perhaps my... Uh, 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 yeah... My uh, my bank balance might be open to one of these because I do I do think it's the nicest of the Alice designs. I um, I don't know what color I want. What do you what do you, what what are, you, what are you gonna get if you get one? So uh, so originally, if I was gonna get one of these, I was gonna go for polycarbonate because I really really like polycarbonate as a material. The problem is I like the styling on the case too much, and the polycarbonate kind of hides. It kind of ruins bit. it a bit, yeah. Because you can't see the detail as much. So on that basis, if I was gonna buy one, I will buy a gray aluminium one. Okay, interesting. I, I, it seems like from uh, what I've been seeing around uh, the Discord, at least, red is the kind of color of choice on uh, on this one. Yeah. A lot of people liking the red, which is interesting. So I feel like historically in our community, red boards were never that popular, and it was, and that's why it was very rarely offered in a lot of boards. But I feel like nowadays, yeah, red is like one of the premier colors. That it's, this board only has three colors aside from polycarbonate. It's just yeah, black, gray, yeah. and red. Red is the only like real color here, kind of. Uh, depending on how you want to look at it, so I, I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it, it is. Um, I, 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 I'm tempted to stay away from red boards, and there's one main reason for that is because uh, I have one of just three Zephyrs that were made in red, and um, I tried to sell that a while ago. No one's interested in a red board. No one's interested. If, in it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, just there was never any interest in it. I think I didn't I think I got one message about it. Um and, and we never came to a deal, so no one was ever interested in that particular red board. Um so I I I'd probably lean away from that just in case I ever did want to offload it because that's just tarnished me. But if you like the red and I think this red's a little bit nicer than the, the Zephyr red, if I'm honest. Um looking at the prototype that one five nine had, then then go for it. It's uh it's it's an easier color to match key sets with now than it was two years ago when I got the Zephyr. So um, yeah, it's definitely uh, easier to match with reds these days. So yeah, I'm gonna have to let uh, Discord pick my color for me. I think I don't really know what I want. I'm pretty sure I don't want the polycarbonate, but I can't decide between the other three. So I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to I have think... someone else do it for me. Fate needs to decide. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think I'll I'll probably go for grey if I pick one of these up. Um, but uh, they are they are on uh, mykeyboard.eu for the EU and Daily Clack yes. for um, uh, Asia as well. So yeah, and Oceana. Awesome. Love those vendors. All right, cool. So let's actually uh, move on before we ramble too much here. If you like the Tengu, bam, it's open now. Closes on February eighth, so you still have quite a bit of time to decide. Very nice looking stuff. All right, let's move on to the IC for the Trivium keyboard. Code name. MPC TKL. I have no idea what MPC is supposed to stand for in this context. I so. I have no idea either. But before we start talking about the board, okay. um, I just want to say, finally, a design that's different for a TKL, right? <laughs> this, yes, this is this is quite <laughs> something. So let me let, let me just start off by saying, if you're not familiar with Pear Vaz, Pear Vaz is uh, the designer, or at least one of the designers of um, the Weaven and the Lustro, which uh, if yes. you're newer to the community, you probably have no idea what those things are. But back in uh, 2016, 2017, when those launched, or 20, I don't remember what year, I think the Weaven might have launched in 2015 originally. But um, yeah. I, I had a Weaven, I've seen Lustros in person. They're very interesting boards. They're, they're not 
necessarily bad by any stretch of the imagination. I think the Weaven is one of the more interesting boards in the community, and I had one. I was part of a group by. I loved it. Uh, regrettably, can, can I just did... talk about the Weaven for a second. Just, sure. just, just for one second. I know. I know. I always complain. I, that we always end up running over and digressing. But... I always like to talk about the Weaven, Jay. <laughs> so. The, the, the Weaven, for me, I've never owned one, sadly. I've never been able to find one for sale. Uh, but I built two. And the Weaven was the board that got me interested in carbon fiber as a material. Um, but, but what did you think of that board? Do you, do you like the Weaven? Do you, I think it's one of the... It's interesting. I think it's one of the best board... No, I think it's one of... The, sorry, not the best. Let me rephrase. I think it's one of... Ooh, interesting. I think it's one of the most interesting boards I've ever seen in the community. And I think it has as much or more character than any other board. Okay. Why do you think that? Uh, we'll partially that just because of the, uh, the the whole like mounting system, where it's kind of this yeah. uh, this outer frame ring of like really thick, nice aluminum, and then there is a a thin sheet of carbon fiber that uh, kind of inserts itself into the bottom. So you basically kind of, and then there's a, a carbon fiber plate by default. I don't think there's any other options either. This 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 board is all about the carbon fiber plate and the carbon fiber um, base plate as well. And then it just has the, yep. the rings of aluminum around them, but it has this uh, this terrible but still kind of fun foot system. Uh, mine, like, never stayed in, like, super tight nearly as I wanted it to, which was kind of a bummer. Right. But uh, okay. it, 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 the board had flaws. There, there were numerous flaws with the board, and the group I was awful. But... The board itself really does speak for itself, and I think that's really really cool. Yeah, um, yeah. The we the Weaven is is one of the boards I'm really sad that I never ever managed to pick up and keep because I really really like it. And it's so so, so for fun. that for that alone, I'm really glad to see something else coming from Pairboss anyway. So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, perhaps I'll perhaps I'll renew my my <laughs> looking for a Weaven at some point. But uh, yeah, yes. But the idea was, <laughs> um, you know, like the Weaven and the Lustra, which are both incredibly aesthetically you know, unique boards in the community. They wanted to bring you a TKL as well, and this fits a very similar theme of, like, what the heck -ness. Um, and I'm just gonna show you this exploded picture here, because this is pretty wild. Let's look at some specs while we're, uh, while we're all taking this in, though. So, pretty standard 7.5 degree angle. The case is going to be aluminum, the plate is going to be aluminum and, uh, or carbon fiber, um, the weight is going to be either aluminum, steel, or copper. The PCB is going to have Bluetooth, RGB, and QMK support. And uh, the overall weight, presumably unbuilt, is going to be about 2.9 kilograms, which is roughly 6.5 pounds for those of you using Freedom Units. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they are expecting to, uh, to have a proto this month, and it is supposed to be gasket mount. And I spent, I don't know, probably the better part of 10 or 15 minutes before the stream looking at this picture, this specific picture, trying to figure out how exactly the gasket mount solution is going to be implemented here, as well as where is the battery for the Bluetooth going to go, and how is the signal for the Bluetooth going to escape the case, considering it is all metal. Okay, so I can answer a couple of those questions, I think. Um, the Bluetooth right. one's easy. If you use a carbon fiber plate, that's not going to uh, stop the uh, the Bluetooth signal. With the aluminium plate, it would do because it would create a Faraday cage. Um, the uh, the the other one in terms of the mounting system. Did you work out how this is how this is mounted? I couldn't quite figure it out. No. So I I think and I I don't know for sure, but uh, the way you can see, you've got the top case, you've got the bottom case, you've got a bar that goes across the back, and then you've got a plate. Okay, that plate looks like it slides in. If you look at the very far, uh, what would be I, uh, the, where the tab and escape key is, you can yeah. see slots inside the case. You can also see that right at the front underneath the front bezel. I suspect that those are going to be lined top and bottom or, or just bottom with some sort of gasket material and the plate will slide into that area um, and will be mounted on those three sides and it will just slide into those particular slots. That's how I think it's going to be mounted. Um, in, t in terms of the battery, uh, I think uh, the, if you look at just how deep the case is, I suspect there's going to be a fair bit of room between the bottom of the PCB and actually where that metal, uh, that metal base piece actually sits. I think there's going to be a fair amount of room in there. Um, so I think that'll be, that'll be you know, pretty much okay. 
Um, in terms of how the base then connects, it looks like the base actually has another rail system that works alongside the plate where the base will slide in as well and then you will screw the back piece on which means there's no visible screws from the outside uh, and then finally if you look at the back piece, if you look at the very front edge of that back piece you can see a tiny little bright cutout in the in, in the middle of it and I think that's a groove that runs all the way along the inside edge of the back piece that you can't see which then just clips over the plate again so I think that's how the mounting system works um, I think there's going to be space in a the battery under there and i think that's how the, the board all clips and screws together so it's interesting it's a very very unique design um i think it's some very very clever design cues that are used in there the other things i've noticed on the board as well is that the usb daughter board does not follow the standardized aio3 uh, wilbur layout it's a unique uh, daughter board design because the four screw points are in a trapezium shape they're not in the small square that we're used to seeing so that's uh, a slight difference that we've uh, we've not seen before um and what about the case sides how do you feel about those Brian? i okay so Similar to the Weaven and Lustro, I feel like this design is very polarizing. It's a very love it or hate it sort of thing. Yeah, I agree. And I, I gotta be honest, I think it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I, I... I can see why anyone would hate this. I really could see why. But I I kind of like it. <laughs> Yeah, I I think this looks great. So again, as we as we said on the show a couple of weeks ago, when we we're talking about TKLs, we don't see enough TKLs that look different. Well, here's one. Here's someone slapping yeah. our faces with that and saying, "Guys, you say that TKLs don't look different. Have a look at this, because now I'm going to blow your minds. This does look really different. That's about um, as different as it gets, Jay. You're right. <laughs> absolutely. Now, as you said, it's not going to be for everyone. Uh, it, it, lots of people aren't going to like like this kind of layout. What I would say is I really do like the front curve, the way the front curves weight underneath the board and it returns underneath. I think that looks great. The side pods are interesting, unique. I don't particularly like the side pods themselves, but I do like the fact that they're uh, a side grip. As I say, I always like being able to pick a board up and I'm, I'm a, a real stickler for side grips. So I like that there's something there. I, I, I think I could potentially give or take those particular grooves, but I do really love that front swoop, that front curve that runs under the front edge of the board. I think that looks fantastic. Um, and I be, if I'm right on how the mount type works with the, P, the, the plate and PCB assembly slotting in, then I think that could be a really interesting type of experience. That could be pretty feel, well. But I don't think it'll feel like a sandwich. I think it'll feel very different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, this could be really, really cool. The problem here is if you're right about all of this uh, particular design, this is not going to be a cheap keyboard. This is this is easily no. gonna pass six seven hundred dollars pretty easily. Well, there's a lot of complex machining to be done on the side of the case. That that groove uh, curves are hard for CNC machines to do. It's not an easy thing, and that looks like it's almost like a bowl shape. It looks like it's yeah. curved in all of the different directions. So that's not going to be easy to do. Um, milling out a square indentation is quite simple, quite easy to do. Uh, rounding the corners of that is. You know, easy and easy to do. Uh, doing a hole is is very easy to do, but to try and do an oval that changes diameter and radius all the way across it, that's quite difficult to do. So, yeah, yeah, I so, I, I think you're right. I think it's going to be quite expensive. This could be really cool, and that's pretty much where it's at right now. It I I think it looks pretty awesome. It looks pretty ambitious, um, for better or worse. But who knows? Maybe we can see this uh, come to life, and maybe it won't cost. A thousand plus dollars but we'll see i i think i would buy one of these just to own it you know it's not because it's it's of anything else i feel like similar to the weaven and lustro it's as much a statement piece as it is a keyboard yes. it's like hey statement i piece. own one of these and this is ridiculous and weird and strange and you probably don't want one of these and you shouldn't own one of these but i own one <laughs> yeah, look at this chunk of metal. This is my chunk of metal. It's mine. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I, I, I would love to own one just for the sake of owning it because I think it's really, really, really nice. Um, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see how this, uh, how this looks when it comes to the prototype because the renders just look great. Uh, yeah. The only, the only, the only change I would personally make to it is I would put an F13 on there because I like the, the, the top uh, F row with an F13 on there. I think it looks neater and smoother and more symmetrical. Um, other than that. I think I'm just yeah I'm just I'm, I'm happy to see a TKL that doesn't look like a TKL, uh, and yeah. this is this comes in the week when I just got my Jane CE shipping invoice, and you know I'm saying this about a different TKL, so it's uh, uh it's this, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, 
I mean, no, nothing against the Jane CE because obviously it's it's an iconic board and it's an amazing it's an amazing board, quality great, QC great. But this is a more interesting keyboard. It's just more interesting. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. There's just something to talk about. People are either going to love it or hate it. Either way, it's a talking point. Yeah, yeah. Th this is um, the, this is the kind of board you don't actually use. You just put it on your coffee table when you're like you know doing a dinner party or something. This is the coffee table. <laughs> this is the coffee table exactly. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So hopefully, you're waiting a little bit more on this one. One thing I will say about this that kind of scares me a little bit is uh, you know the, their last major project, which I I presume is the Weaven. I don't know if they've done anything between the Weaven and this. But uh, the last weaving group I was a nightmare. It really was. It was it was like two years long before I got my board. There was no communication. Often for like six plus months, nobody would know anything. You know, everyone had medical issues. Everyone was in the hospital. Uh, you know, all the this. I'm not going to necessarily say their excuses because I don't know one way or the other. But like all the typical things you hear from prolonged group buys, uh, pretty much happened. It was it was bad. People had to fly in to try to salvage the group buy and do the shipping. It was really wow. really bad. So. I, I hope that uh, if this design really does come to fruition, that uh, you know maybe they'll actually have some established vendors take care of it. And it, something that it does say that it does say on the bottom that vendors are to be decided. So that gives me a little bit of hope, yeah. because uh, you know back back in that time, you know vendors didn't really do the group buys. It was all individual group buy runners that did everything, and sure. you know, it was always bad. It's it's way better now than it ever was. Um, so yeah, unit quality, price, vendors still to be decided, but uh, prototype should arrive at. Uh, to to them this month, so we'll we'll wait and see. Hopefully, we get some good news. I'd like to see more on this. Yeah, Talisman says J score. I would love to J score this because I think it's great. I like to see anything different. I think this mount type could be yeah. really impressive. It's giving me ideas on something that fits with another project I'm working on that I might suggest to someone. Um, yeah, it's. It, it, I think this is just wacky as hell. I hope I'm right in terms of how it mounts. I think I am, but again, yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, about I, I need, need yeah. to be told to, 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 to show that I'm right. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for this. Yep, cool stuff. All right, let's move on to some key sets. And we do have quite a few of them this week, starting with the group buy for Cat Lich. So if you're unfamiliar, this is the um, this is one of one of three Konosuba themed cat sets um, coming out in uh, in recent times. And this one is based on the character Wiz from, again, Konosuba, who is a kindly undead shopkeeper. She's very wholesome, very uh, very awesome character, and I think this set looks absolutely, positively superb. So, again, this is a cat set, and uh, because of that, you have a myriad of kits, because obviously they do MOQ a little bit different than uh, most other places do MOQ. And... Uh, Holy crap, lots and lots and lots of kits. I know you're not an anime fan, you have no idea what Konosuba is, Jay, but how do you feel about the set yes. as it is? So, I, I, so Eskimojo, who designed this, is actually in chat as well. Um, so, hey man, good to see you. Uh, and we met we met recently at the uh, the Leeds meetup. But uh, um, So my first thoughts on this set was, as you said, I have no idea about the reference material for this. So when stuff like this comes up, I have to judge it on... Do I like the look? Because I can't relate it back to the theme because I just don't have any knowledge of that. Um, it, it's, so it's very difficult for me to understand that kind of side of it without having that knowledge. Um, the first thing I would say that jumps out at me is there's a couple of things that are different and unusual for, to this set to others. The first thing is that it uses lowercase legends. We don't see that very often. Uh, the vast majority of keycap sets have capital uh, uh, legends, you know, capitalized legends. Uh, so to see that is quite different and unique, and it's quite refreshing as well. So I think we talked about this during the interest check a few weeks ago, uh, and we both said that it was nice to see something refreshing and different being done, uh, even if it wasn't something that we particularly liked ourselves or wanted to use ourselves. Uh, so I'm glad to see that. I think that the way that kits are done for uh, for cat sets is really good to see. So I think having all of these different kits broken down uh, with lower MOQs per trial kit, so it's easier for them to reach the uh, the required MOQ for people who need those kits is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I think that the, uh, the the set works well overall. I think some of the renders show off the set to, to, to quite some good examples on both flashy colored boards in bright purples as well as more demure boards in silvers and blacks. So I, I, I kind of like this. I think it looks great. And, you know, I'm a sucker for cat profile. It's uh, it's my second favorite key cat profile. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, big thumbs up for the ISO renders as well. It's nice to see those. Yeah, absolutely. Also, my 
obligatory shout out for having renders on the KBD fans tofu. Um, I always <laughs> love seeing renders on boards that are immensely affordable that way more people have than, for instance, I don't know, uh, an M65A or a Fiel. Um, it's always kind of nice to stay down to earth and render it on boards where way more people own them. Um, so you can mark your set a little bit more accordingly. Uh, regardless, I, I think the set looks pretty awesome. I love the kit breakdown. I love the theme. I'm a big fan of the show. Definitely planning on picking this up. And the prices aren't too bad either. Alphas are going to run you, uh, I think, they have a breakdown here. Yeah, $35. Mods are uh, $60. And the mods actually come with uh, a fair amount of compatibility. So as long as you don't need, uh, I think, like a numpad and, uh, you know, maybe some more exotic stuff. Um, you can kind of, a lot of users can get by on just the alphas and mods, and that'll only cost you 95 bucks, so. Yeah, I think I think when I was looking at the mods uh, mods kit, you can do pretty much everything uh, yeah. from, a, from a TKL, 65%, 60, multiple different bottom rows, he's got H, H, K, B, Sport, there's, there's tons of stuff in there. So. Yeah, there's for, even an ISO enter in there, um, yeah. which there's is kind of... two. What, is there two? Oh, there, yeah, there are two. Wow, I didn't, I didn't actually notice that before. So you got... Yeah, you have, you have two ISO enters, one accent, one non, and in the base alphas kit, you have UK ISO. This makes sense because I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Eskimojo is in the UK. So he is, he, yes. He's clearly taking care of his own here. I think the, the kit breakdown works pretty nice. To have, to sp be able to spend $95 or whatever, you know, the comparable uh, conversion is, um, to get just alpha and mods and be able to support UK ISO with or without accents is pretty nice. It also puts US ISO for for, for, that, for uh, that huge who, range of people yeah. who use it. Who, who is, who, there's always one guy. Who's, who is the one guy in the community that uses US ISO? We got to get uh, a username. We got to put a username to this. It's depleted Vespin, uh, Miguel. He's he's a really nice guy to chat to. Um, I'm, really? I'm not sure. He sometimes watches, yeah. Uh, but he absolutely he uses uh, US ISO. Yeah. Is he in the US? Uh, I think he's in uh, South America, if I remember rightly. Interesting. I wonder. I, I wonder what what reasoning would someone have for using US ISO versus either UK ISO or ANSI. Well, so so again, we're digressing here as we always uh, do. But a lot of yeah. a lot of retail stores in the US do use US ISO, um, and I I did uh, some a little bit of research. I was reading up about why this was the case, and apparently it's because the uh, when you're in a working environment, it's easier to hit a large enter key when you're stood up and you do a bit of typing, and then you hit an enter key to to do it. It's easier oh. for retailers. Yeah. That that was the theory. I don't know how true that is or how well that works in practice. Uh, but when you stood up, it's two bit of typing, and then you'd pause and then you'd hit it. So um, that that was the reasoning behind it. But uh, but we have to remember that both ANSI and ISO were both IBM creations. IBM is a US company. Uh, they would just create two different ways of splitting up that big ass enter shape, which was the old L shaped one that came around and swooped around and took up that whole space. It's two different ways of cutting up the same key cap to give more compatibility. Uh, it ended up with just two different layouts, and then one happened to be picked by the US, one happened to be picked by European communities, uh, and then the third variant happened to be picked up uh, uh, GIS, which is used in a lot of um, uh, Japanese communities as well. So uh, it, it all comes back down to IBM just finding different ways of splitting up what become a standardized and big ass enter key. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, regardless, I, I really love the fact that so many people can just pick up alphas and mods for 95 bucks. And that's all they need. It's great, right? That, that's it's great. Yeah, it, it's it's almost never this easy. And I, I really appreciate that at this time. One thing that I also thought was really, really interesting here. I'm going to scroll down past all the bazillion renders because I think it's at the bottom. I'm going to feel really stupid when it's not. Um, but, oh crap, it's not. Okay, I'm going to feel really stupid. So this set actually has a total, if I get this correctly, of six proxies. Which I thought was kind of interesting. We don't usually see that many proxies. So you have novel keys in the US, my keyboard in the EU, Z Frontier in uh, in Asia, and uh, Desk Hero in Canada, switch keys in Australia, and Fun Keys, who I had never heard of before, but apparently is a Ukraine and Russia proxy. So pretty interesting. A lot of a uh, lot of availability on this set. So it is interesting because one of the things that's up and coming in the community now, which isn't always obvious, is the fact that the the Eastern European to kind of uh, uh, Western kind of Asia, which is um, all of kind of like Russia, Latvia, Lithuania, Ukraine, all of those kinds of areas, they're not 
they're, they're, they're kind of a little bit disjointed from Europe and they're kind of a little bit disjointed from, uh, from from the Asian communities. But they actually have a huge keyboard following. I've been speaking to quite a few people who live in Russia recently. Uh, there is a guy in Moscow who happens to now own a board that I used to own and he reached out to me. He was talking to me about it um, and he was explaining to me that the whole um, kind of Russian community is actually up and coming quite quite you know uh, a lot at the minute it, it, it's, it's growing rapidly um um it, it's just something that's uh, that's starting to take off there it's starting to become big and it's probably a couple of years behind where we are in terms of the rest of the western community lumped together as in the, the eu and the us kind of uh, area so uh, yeah i really interested to see how that grows uh really interested to see how we can integrate them into the community and how we can start to look at you know russia for new ideas and uh something that russia has that we probably don't really realize is they have a ton of manufacturing capability in russia so it might even be that there's new stuff that we can do with uh, industry in russia as well so yeah really interested to see how that works out cool yeah so set looking pretty good as far as i'm concerned i'm looking forward to picking this up and uh yeah there you go that's open right now guys i think it opened yeah just just the other day and it runs all month so you have a little yep. bit of time to uh make a decision on that one all right let's move on here speaking of things that are currently open over on tkc aka the geek dot company you have gmk dark and this is a set that we checked out interest check back in april i think somewhere Ooh, in there, april yes. or may and it was, uh, this it was is whenever i was off yeah yeah that, and this, that was when it was yeah this is one that i think uh, a lot of people have been anticipating and kind of uh, maybe flew under the radar a little bit but this is a, a very classic kind of black on black is what they call it. I prefer calling it black on dark gray or like black on charcoal or something because I feel like um, it's not it's not quite dark enough to be uh, to be black on black. But regardless, I do think it looks positively stellar and it starts at 120 bucks for a base kit. Um, so not too bad. Base kit doesn't actually include um, numpad or ISO. So the 120 dollar price. Maybe a little higher than uh, than comparable kitted GMK base kits, but how, yeah. do you, how do you how do you feel about it? So 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 this is one of those times where the base kit and splitting out the the ISO and other things is going to cost me more. And I know I've talked about it on the show before how the average cost of a kit has increased for me, even though the average base kit price has come down. The average cost of me getting my layout has increased, and that's seen across Europe. Uh, that being said, in terms of the base kit as well, so we've seen similar base kits to this um, uh, historically. It's very similar to kind of like the Striker base kit, which issued NumPad and a few other bits and pieces and ISO. Uh, I think uh, Hamon did. It as well when it ran through drop and it had numpad and iso as different child kits so it's very similar to that the pricing is a little bit higher um uh, but again then again it is through a different vendor and all of those things do make a difference yeah. um i i actually really like this set i've always been a fan of dark sets and one of my favorite sets is actually gmk exempt which is kind of the exact opposite of this it's the black alphas with the, with the dark gray legends um and i really love that set i have it on my my exempt um uh, as well, so I really love it. So this to me is a must buy. Uh, it's very reminiscent of one of the recent, I think it was an Imsto set that ran, which was black on black. Um, that did really well. Uh, I actually proxied a set for that for for Mousy in the UK. Mousy, if you're watching, I hope you're enjoying the set. Um, so I'm really glad to see that they're now going to get a GMK version of this. And I've been waiting for GMK Dark to come to group buy. So I'm really excited for it. I'm definitely going to join this. It's one that's definitely on my radar. Uh, big shout out in terms of the kits for some other perspectives. So the Icons kit uh, is uh, really, really good. It brings back the purse capsule key, which is one of my favorite keys. Um, the Deviant kit as well uh, also offers a ton of different 40 support. It's got all the space bars and everything else you could see in there. And I think that's a really, really comprehensive 40s kit and includes the LSB as well. So I think that's good to see. Uh, and really, really big shout out because the ISO kit actually has the text ISO enter and the um, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, icon. Um, Icon, I couldn't think of the word then. Uh, I was going to symbol okay. and I knew that was wrong. Yeah, the icon. And it also has the icon one in there as well because the, the worst part about ISO is when you only get a, a text ISO enter. I don't think that looks particularly good. And I would much rather have with any base, even if the rest of the uh, the, the legends are, are text, I'd rather have the icon ISO enter, which is the, the traditional way GMK did it. So, or Cherry did it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is also priced, so, so yes, and uh, someone mentioned this in, in chat that it is also priced a little bit high because it's 150 MOQ rather than some of the sets that 
uh, mass drop run where they're expecting to sell 250, 500 sets quite easily. And we know they're going to buy a ton of extras to sell in their recaps and all the other things as well. So that's why the price is a little bit higher. Uh, but yeah, I'm absolutely stoked to see this. I think it looks great. It's a definite must buy for me. It's you know a classy set. It'll go with most keyboards. It's something that's not going to look out of place. It's going to be a great fit for office boards, that kind of stuff. It's going to be really sleek. Uh, it will be great for a Jane CE uh, for that black on black on black look. So yeah, mm. I think this is great. Nice. Yeah, I think it looks great as well. I've owned multiple iterations of this colorway in various PBT sets, but uh, yeah. now we finally get it coming in all all of GMK's glory, which I think is pretty freaking amazing, um, in my opinion. So, yeah. Again, like you said, based off a of 150 MOQ price, and that's why the base kit is 120 versus, you know, maybe 100 or 110, which is what we have seen, like when uh, you mentioned Striker or something like GMK Minimal, GMK 9009 Round 3, etc., etc. Yep. So, uh, yeah, definitely maybe a few bucks higher than uh, than we'd like for this particular kind of base kit. But when it is based on that MOQ, you know, what else What else can you do? I mean, the key that company probably doesn't expect to sell 500 units a year or 1,000 units, so... Yeah, just just on that as well, both the Key Company and Candy Keys, which are the only two proxies that I've looked at on this, they both have their own numbers for this, so I, I think it's actually well on the way to oh. IQ already because the uh, uh, I think the numbers on uh, TKC are 55 base kits, and it's 61 base kits on Candy Keys, uh, and the ISO kit is already at 27 out of 100 on uh, on Candy Keys, so uh, it's already nearly a third of the way there, which is really good this to is... see. <laughs> yeah, one, it's, of it's, our, it's... one of our US ISO guys must be one of the these two out of a hundred on the TKC page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so the I, in, interestingly, this is really interesting. In the EU on Candy Keys, the ISO kit is actually outselling the icons and the numpad kit, and it's almost uh, it's almost outselling them uh, uh, two to one. So really, really <laughs> it's, interesting. It's, it's also almost like the Deviant kit. It's almost like they're an EU vendor, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, even in the EU, traditionally that doesn't happen. Traditionally, it makes up about half of maybe all base kit sales, and all of the other ones usually around two thirds or whatever. But uh, yeah, even, even ISO and uh, I think what happens is a lot of people join the community in the EU. They struggle to find ISO compatible key sets, so they just switch to ANSI because it's easy and trying to find the keycaps that they want. Um, so then when keycaps do come out, they think, "Oh, I've already switched to ANSI, therefore I'm just not going to buy the ISO ones anymore." So we do see that that take up is uh, is usually a bit slow. So to see it actually roughly half the number of base kits is is pretty good in, in early days. It's even for an EU set. That's uh, that's really good to see. So I'm, that makes me happy. Yep, fair enough. So, yep, that's available right now at the Key Company. $120 base kit. Looks uh, looks pretty nice. I'm going uh, yeah. to be thinking about picking one of these up as well. I need to try to really... I really want to get Tengu this month. So I need to try to, like, not buy everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think my 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 Tengu purchase will entirely be dependent on if I manage to score one of the gaskets or not. If I don't get a, a GSK T zero zero, then I will definitely get the Tengu. If I do, then I oh. I, I may I may have to skip Tengu. What so a, I think that's going to make my decision. What a first world problem, Jay, having to decide between the Tengu and the Gasket zero zero. This is <laughs> this is like this is the worst our lives must get. I imagine. <laughs> Oh, for sure, for sure, we're, yeah, yeah. We're very fortunate at, at times. It's been an expensive month. It's been a really expensive it's a month. Lot of things um, running. It's a lot of things running. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, mean I, think it's, I think it's okay to talk about it now, but I've just, uh, just joined a, a, a mini uh, commission run for a key cut as well, so that was really expensive, but I'm really excited about that. So to try and justify another $500 board right now is, uh, is going to be a difficult one to get the wide yeah. room. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. You just don't tell her, Jay. It's easy. Easy. Anyways, let's move on to our next key set. This is the interest <laughs> check. This, this, is, this is actually Jay's favorite set this month. Um, this is GMK Space. I didn't say that, I, Ryan. I didn't I say that. I know, I know. It, it's strictly comedic purposes, like half the things I say. Don't worry. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, is the, this is the interest check for GMK Space Pepe. And if you're not familiar with uh, Pepe, Pepe is a very classic, iconic internet meme that started, I don't know, back in 2008 or 2009 or 2010, somewhere in that era. And uh, it's kind of exploded if you're familiar with things like feels good man, feels bad man, but it, it, everything like ties back to Pepe in some way. And uh, I, I'm I'm a big Pepe fan myself, but I'm not too familiar with Space Pepe. But uh, but boy, okay. this this setting is, is existing now. 
Can, can, can I can I just say something? Um, yes. And I think a few other people agree on this. This set looks far better than its name suggests it's going to look. When I opened this set up, and I opened yes. it up for the first time whilst I was in chat with you, Brian, and I was like, oh, that actually looks, that's all right. That's not, not not what I was expecting. So this set looks better than its name expects it to. My hot take is it's, uh, it's, uh, it's ain't what you expect when you see the title. This isn't what it says on the tin. This doesn't do what it says on the packet. This is something very different. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and for that reason, I, I don't, I wouldn't say it was my favorite set of the month because it's not, but I don't dislike it. I actually quite enjoy looking at it. I think it looks yeah. really nice. It and actually it, looks pretty good. And yeah, like usually when you when I when I see an interest check, it, it, it's for whatever, and it's based off of a meme. I I sigh heavily to myself before I click it, and I go, I guess I'm not putting this on the news doc. But I opened this yeah. up. The interest check, honestly, not that bad. There's some information here. There's a kit breakdown. There's a, a couple, admittedly, kind of bad renders. But, uh, you know, some renders nonetheless. Uh, he's got a color breakdown. It, clearly, they, they want to make this set. Like, it isn't just a joke. Um, which I thought was kind of cool. And it, like you yeah. mentioned, it, it doesn't look that bad. And, and what I have to say as well for the base kit is actually being thought about. The base kit's had some serious attention paid to it. It's not just pick another set and copy it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I suspect that these users come from the 40s Discord because there's a couple of one new control and alt keys additional in there uh, that have been chipped in. So I think uh, that's for 40s support in the base kit. But so uh, just looking at it, I think there's there's a lot of compatibility in the base. There's no ISO, but there is NumPad. There's a lot of 65% support. There's HHKB support. You've got alternative bottom rows. You've got two meme keys instead instead of uh, win keys, which I do quite like. Um, that that, quite that good. is good. That is, that is actually yeah. a nice touch. <laughs> it, it, it is, right. Uh, you know, I, I think it looks... It, it's, it's a very valid base kit. I, I don't think I'm a fan of the... Um, the orange and blue accent keys. I don't think I'm a fan of those particularly, but I don't mind the blue and black mod keys and the waves esque kind of alphas with a with a dark blue and a and a bright green. I think those kind of work really well. The base kit looks solid, as I say. I think that looks just fine. Uh, the the GMK Space Pepe 40s kit, I think it is, so uh, an additional modifiers kit and split space bar kit. That looks pretty okay as well. Gives you a lot of different um, bits and pieces, extra mods and. Stuff. Stuff. The what happened to the sorry, control? Go on, what happened to the stepped control in the? Uh, I think it's the a poor render. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 just it's, a it's a different color on the stepped portion. I, I think I think I think it's supposed to show the light difference on the bottom part of it, so it's uh, supposed to look like there's a light difference. But then that light difference is crept up onto the top part as well. So um, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. I think I think it's right to just show differences in light. Uh, what is really interesting is that in the the ISO kit. Uh, they have UK ISO, great, big thumbs up for that, you know, that always pleases me. But they've got alpha coloured ISO keys, which go in your alpha cluster on your num row uh, and around your enter key and uh, left shift key. But then they've also got modified coloured ones. I'm just not quite sure why they even exist in the kit. Why would you have uh, a black two and three key on your num row in between a blue one and four key? I, I don't get why that would exist. Well, it doesn't end there either, because like we were talking about before the show, the rest of the kit does the exact same thing. Yeah, then then on your your mod row you've got the the other bits as well. Now the only one of those keys that I think this actually works for is the left shift key because in ISO we split the left shift. We've got one point two five U shift and a one U key instead of a two point two five U key. Now for symmetry purposes, if we had that uh, that slash key uh, in the alpha section, if that was mod colored, that's fine. That works because it looks just like the length of the standard shift key. It adds that kind of step down symmetry towards the middle of the board. That's fine. But the rest of them make no sense why they're mod colored. Yeah, I, I wonder if that's actually just a mistake. I, I but maybe it's just part of the meme, Jay. I don't I don't actually maybe. know. I, maybe. I I don't actually know. And uh, to round out the kits, there is a a very simple four space bar space bar kit there. Um, I do want to go back to the base kit for a second though, just just to give a quick history lesson to some some newbies that might be in the chat. You brought up the fact that there is a one U control and alt there um, in the base kit, and that could probably be used for some um, some forty support, but Yep. <clears throat> a lot of you, uh, a lot of you more experienced enthusiasts might remember that when sixty-five percent first started becoming popular, the uh, the bottom row of choice, the only really option you had when it first came out, was one two five, one two five, one two five, six point five, and then six one U keys on the right side. So you'd have you'd have three one U modifiers on your bottom row, and then your uh, your three arrow keys on the bottom row as well. So. Uh, 
almost every GMK base set used to have one you control in all to support the traditional 65% layout. So not terribly important here, but I felt like bringing that up just because uh, I'm old. I don't know. Yeah, it's it, it, it's 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 a good point. It's a fair challenge. I think I would I always used to put the two 1.5 U keys there instead of the three 1 U keys on the right hand side of space before you got to the arrow cluster. But yes, you are right. It does support that as well. Yeah. All right, so there you go. There's GMK Space Pepe. Um, they're still working on more stuff, so we don't really know when anything's actually coming, but... A, a better key set than it has any right to be going by the <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to see some better renders, because admittedly the only uh, two real renders here are, are, are just not that great, i got to be honest. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it looks just, just, just fine. It's a good key set i think it's okay um I, I it's it's not my favorite as brian alluded to this month at all but uh, I, I, I think it, it's better than i was expecting i was expecting to open it and roll my eyes and go oh not again a little bit like when i got frustrated when we were talking about peed in the pool um <laughs> but i was i was pleasantly surprised by how nice this set is yeah yeah not too bad let's see some more renders that, that there's, means, there's potential here <laughs> Yeah, can I, I just want to say one last thing on this set. If you want to see what this looks like, you could buy GMK Signal, which is blue on black, and GMK Waves, and you could actually put them together on a keyboard and get a pretty good idea of how this would look. All right, someone that owns both sets in chat, please do that for us so we can, uh, we can take a better look here. Anyways, we'll have to wait for more info on that. Let's move on to a group buy that has already opened. I think it opened, like, right before the show. This is GMK Fuyu. Uh, Fuyu is Japanese for winter. It's it's an approximate translation, but uh, but yeah, Japanese for winter there. And this set is very much themed around that, and uh, kind of like uh, Sakura as well, cherry blossoms, that whole kind of Japanese culture as well. Uh, I'm a really big sure. fan of that, and I think that's uh, represented pretty well here in the set. I'm not the biggest fan of Sub Legends. I'm kind of kind of tired of seeing Japanese Sub Legends in particular. I feel like they're a little overplayed, but for the colors, I think this set's pretty fantastic. Yeah, so my usual uh, hero, uh, feeling for Hiragana Sub Legends and Katakana and all that other kind of stuff is that I just don't really like it. I don't own many sets with that, and I think we've talked about it on the show before. But I actually think it works here. That soft blue one, the kind of bright white, it actually works. and It doesn't look too busy on those uh, those Alpha and Numero keys. I think it looks pretty okay. It's one of the better sets for it to look on you know it, just just to look from an aesthetics perspective it's one of the nicer sets that it, it looks on uh, and and like you right i actually quite like this set the base kit compatibility is really strong it's got numpad it's got iso it's got 65 percent hhk let's talk about this for a Multiple. second actually because yeah, this sure. th this is actually the most expensive gmk set we've had in quite some time on the us proxy kono it starts at 150 dollars for the base kit which is Definitely five or ten bucks higher than uh, than any other set that we've had in uh, in recent memory for GMK. But like you mentioned, the compatibility is huge. They really wanted to do a big kind of all encompassing base kit, and they uh, they're they're kind of getting away with it here. So they have uh, they have three Anzi enters. You get two accents out of there. Same with the ISO. You get three ISO enters. You get three numpad enters, and you get uh, three escapes. So they're really pushing the accents yeah. there. And they have uh, they have what is this uh, eight nine? They have nine novelties right there in the base kit as well. Um, with the numpad and the U the full UK ISO support. So a lot of keys in this base kit. Yeah, it's it's a huge base kit. Two U shift as well by the looks of it. You know, I mean, there's there's not many boards you couldn't cover with this. I mean, I can't think of anything you you wouldn't be able to cover with this board. Uh, any board you wouldn't be able to cover with this set. I think it looks great. There's multiple options for the 65% rows. You know, there, there's there's just a ton of compatibility. Now, it's, it's, it's interesting you mentioned the price because I think the last time we saw a base kit this big that was a high price, I think it was GMK Lime, which was $174. Um, and the reason that was so high is because it enforced the novelties in the base kit, which this does as well. And as we all know, new novelties mean new molds, which means higher cost. Uh, so that's that's a big reason why the, uh, the price is, is, is high for this base kit, you know, actually including those particular, um, uh, I guess the cherry blossoms and that, uh, that that novelty escape key, that does increase the cost of a base kit. But to keep it to $150 for this size, I don't think that's too out of reach. There's a lot of options. You're almost, you've almost got um, a base kit and the Mr. Sleeves kit effectively here, you know, yeah. in terms of that, because of all the different accent keys you've got uh, and then the novelties on top. So for that price, I think it's okay. It's on the top of what most people want to pay, but there's no one who really needs to buy any of the additional kits unless you really, really want to. Uh, you know, the icon mods, the space bars, 
unless you need those keys, 99% of users are going to get everything that they need from the from the base kit. It's just going to be a few 40s users that need the split space bars, which they could use the additional shift keys for, or people who want icon mods. That That's really true. This this base kit actually gives you uh, every shift you pretty much uh, you pretty much need within reason, <coughs> including the the two use shift that almost nobody uses anymore. Um, and the secondary 2.25 shift for your uh, your Leopold boards, your FC660 boards. So, yeah, yeah pr pretty good. I, I think if you're the type of person that's actually going to use the accents and the novelties of this set, 150 really isn't a bad price. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, th I think when you when you consider everything, and if you looked at say one of the earlier sets that we've looked at, GMK Dark, uh, if you bought the same kits to get the same keys, the price would probably be a little bit more. So if you bought the UK ISO kit and the numpad kit, and the base kit for GMK Dark, it's going to be a higher price in this one. So yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, speaking of kits, there are two additional kits alongside the base kit here. So there's kind of a what, what is basically an icon mods kit. So if you're more of a fan of that, it comes with uh, all the accents as well. So if you like icon mods, you got that. And you also have a, a pretty rich spacebar kit, including split spacebar and the uh, the 40% stuff. So very, very nice there. I, I, I like this. I agree with you that as far as Japanese sub-legends go, this is one of the better iterations on a GM case that I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm just still a little, a little over them. With that said, I might still buy this set, though, because I do think the colors just work way too well, and I love the theme. I this this is this is high on my list of wants. Is this yeah? Oh yeah. Also uh, the desk mat. Really someone great. someone actually pointed out. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, the desk mat is fantastic on this set. Look at that. That is that is just sublime. I'm just trying to scroll down to it now. It's pretty uh, funny. Yeah, it is really nice. Yeah, it is genuinely. I love the desk mat. It's pastel colors. It's clean. It's simple. Um, I, I really like the, uh, uh, the, the the last design where it's kind of got that fade across from the blue to pink to the, the white yeah. at the far side. It'd be a nightmare to keep it clean, but I do really <laughs> yeah. like it. Yep, yep, absolutely. There's also a Rama novelty, of course, just as almost every single set in existence has these days. And uh, I too believe that that's that's pretty nice. Got a little bit of an infill yeah. there, and it's that's. Uh... That yeah, is it looks pretty, good. pretty nice. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, to getting some of this. A couple of people in chat have just mentioned that the GMK high voltage base kit was uh, was pretty high in cost as well. Um, it was yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was the same price, but I, I, well, I, yeah. I have a feeling that's not doing so well. I don't, I've not seen any numbers for it, so I don't well, know how it is. High voltage is a bad set that's probably not going to make MLQ anyways, so let's be real here. I, I would agree. I would agree. I, I, I think it will struggle to get to MLQ. Uh, so. Yes, high voltage also features a $150 base kit. Um, I mean, even if it's the same cost, it's still that's these are still the highest costing GMK sets we've seen in quite some time. Um, I agree. I think the the highest one we've seen before it was GMK and Lime, and I think that was one hundred and seventy four ninety nine. Lime was quite a while ago too, all things considered. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that was back when the uh, the exchange rate between the dollar and euro was a lot weaker, so GMK sets were more expensive once we did convert them over to USD. Um, because that's something we have to keep in mind too. Sometimes GMK sets cost less. Sometimes sometimes they cost more. It's uh, it kind of all depends on the the euro to dollar um, comparison. All right, let's move on to our next set here. Also in Group I, this is GMK Burgundy Round Three. So this is uh, something a lot of people are really into because uh, it had a pretty successful first two rounds, and here it is back again, at Round Three. And uh, because it is running on Dixie Mech for the U.S. proxy, they do have the, I, I guess we'll say updated legends. I don't want to say corrected legends because I think you yelled at me last time I said that. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> it does have the uh, the updated, more centered icon mod uh, legends, which I do appreciate a lot. Has a couple uh, couple simple novelties in the base kit. I think those are very very tasteful. Uh, no pun intended, because I'm not really much of a wine drinker. But uh, yeah, so how do you feel about this one? Uh, yeah, Burgundy classic colorway. I think each round, I think as, we, as you said, this is round three. I think each round has changed something. As there's been different mods and all of that, and uh, it, it's changed something with each round. Uh, I think this looks great. It's a really nice set in real life. If you've never seen this one, it's one that works on so many keyboards. It's a really good set. I think it's one of those almost you know sets that should be available all the time with white on black and black on white and things like that it's just a really classic colorway and i really appreciate it um i already own burgundy so i won't be joining this round because i'm 
Uh, I, I prefer the old mods to the, the new style mods, but you know it's great to see it running again. I think it looks good. Uh, the kit's pretty strong, to be honest. The base kit, numpad, uh, ISO 65%, HHKB, all there in base kit, you know, just fine. Um, Dixie has changed the base kit slightly. I know there was some consternation around him having his uh, 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 Dixie X logo on one of the keycaps for the novelty escape key. Those have now been changed to a bunch of grapes, which fits the wine theme, and a wine glass with some burgundy swelling around then as well which i think look really really nice so yeah looks pretty good yeah absolutely so 130 dollars base kit it's about on par for the compatibility you get like jay mentioned you get numpad you get uh, some basic iso support hhkb on z you get a couple novelties in there uh pretty pretty simple pretty nice tidy base kit if you want uh hongbu sub legends then uh, there's a kit for you there very nice and there's also an add-on kit, which I really appreciate, because it's kind of like a hybrid of a spacebar kit. You get your Alice B in there, but you also get windowed uh, keys for your uh, your caps lock, your notifications area, your num lock, your scroll lock, etc. I, I really do not appreciate this enough. I absolutely love windowed keys. I get them every time I get the opportunity to. Yeah, window keys are nice. Window keys are amazing. So yeah, beautiful looking set, open right now. No, uh, no real bad things to say about it because it's already very successfully run. Twice. This was actually one of these yeah. sets that um, I, I, I passed on round one, but one of my local friends got it, and I was like, ah, it's not going to be that great. And then uh, I saw it on one of her boards, and I was like, shit. <laughs> I should have. I should have. It, it was one of those sets, so uh, I feel like it'll probably be the same uh, kind of situation for me this time. So yeah, there you go. GMK round three Burgundy open right now. There are your yeah, boxes. definitely go check it out, guys. Yeah, I, I I do feel it's the set that should be in anyone's collection, one of any of the three rounds, because it's just such a classic colorway. Yeah, yep, definitely. All right, and to round us out for key sets, uh, this is GMK Peach Blossom. This is in group by right now. This is a set that actually launched, uh, I think, in time to be on our last episode, but I totally forgot it because it was like one day off. But um, anyways, covering it this time, of course, GMK Peach Blossom by Kema. And uh, this one, this one's doing pretty well. This has been open for uh, about a week now or so. I don't know if we actually have updated numbers in this thread. I'm looking for them, but I'm not finding them. So I don't actually know how this is doing. But it does have a $100 base kit, which I do appreciate quite a bit. And uh, like we were talking about earlier, this is actually really similar to the uh, the GMK Dark base kit, which is $20 it higher. It is, yeah. But because this is on novel keys, we can expect it to to, uh, to sell a little bit more just because novel keys is a little bit more key set established and does have a little bit larger of a presence at the moment. So uh, unsurprisingly, this is probably based off of a, a 250 or a 500 MOQ uh, in terms of that $100 base kit, if not uh, higher. So very, very nice. What do you think about the color? I think it's pretty unique. It, it is. It's a really nice bright pink. And I think uh, the first thing that jumps out when you look at the uh, the renders is is legibility going to be an issue is there going to be enough contrast between the legends and the uh the the base color of the keycaps and i don't think the renders do justice as to how this is actually going to look in real life i think it's going to be much more legible than what people think when they look at those first uh, the renders if you actually look at the uh, the first board uh that, that's there it's actually much more legible when you get it up large and close in front of you so i think that, that that's the first thing i would like to say um that i think it's going to be much easier to uh to, to read and see those uh, legends in real life than what renders will portray uh, sometimes we see a little bit of differences in renders and how they look in real life i think this is one of those occasions um so that's the first thing i wanted to say uh, other than that i think it looks great as you said before the base kit's pretty solid for a hundred dollars hundred dollars can't go wrong if you're continental us and you use uh, ansi up to tkl that base kit basically has you covered if you use a 60 percent 65 percent tkl that's it that's all you need if, yeah you know dead simple uh if you're outside of uh that or you need um a numpad one more kit and you're done that gives you everything and there's opportunity here for people to split numpads and iso kits if that's what they want to do you know one person buys both and sells the iso kit or whatever you know i think yeah. it's really good yeah, you're a you're That's, a big fan of this right this method the iso numpad think, hybrid if if you're going to take them out of base kit putting them together is probably my idea of how you get those kits both to support each other to have a queue yeah. 
Okay. I think it's a really good way of doing it. Uh, if you want to re- get the base kit price as, as aggressively low as possible, like $100, I think the best way to put ISO and numpad in separate kits isn't to put them separately because they tend to struggle against each other, uh, but actually use them to bolster each other's sales as long as you can get that kit for a good price. So if you can get that kit for $40, $45, I think that works really well. Uh, and then you can just get two people, you know, Brian, for example, if you wanted a numpad and I wanted the ISO keys, you could buy both the base kit and the numpad and ISO kit. Uh, you could then sell me the ISO keys and split the cost 50-50 with me and I just buy a base kit and we're both happy you know it, yeah. it's really good for, for mixing and matching like that uh, and then 40s kit again solid 40s kit offering uh, Alice B all the different 40s kits that you uh, 40 kits, keys that you would need uh, including a two-year shift key that's not in the base kit it's been moved to here which is an interesting choice uh, I don't think there's many 40s that use a two-year shift key either I can think of the pearl I think but other than that can't think of anything else that uses it, uh, and then the standard base kit for sorry, standard space bar kit, uh, which just includes your six uh, uh, point sorry six point no just six u six u space bar six point two five in white seven u in white and then uh, some split space bar options as well. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. I I, I really I mean obviously I I am the target consumer for this base <laughs> kit. I, I never use anything above a TKL. I never use an umpad. I never need ISO. Uh, I, I don't use 40. Like, this this is my jam. I am so ready for more $100 base kits that are set up similar to this. Yeah. That's how yeah. I want to be buying GMK sets. I know that's incredibly selfish, but uh, I got to be honest. Yeah, no, I mean, we're, we're all different. We all want different things. Um, and as we said before, I think one of the bigger opportunities we've got is the how different uh, environments around the world might have different base kits going forwards with GMK as we start to get more buying power. You know, we can start to explore those kinds of things so we can do things like that. Uh, just in terms of the numbers, I've just seen some updated numbers. These are based as of the 7th of January, so after it had been open for five days. Uh, 226 base kits sold. Uh, so that's almost MOQ. So I would imagine it's you know, on MOQ already yeah. by now, uh, 250. The uh, numpad and ISO is at 65 out of 100. So again, as I said before, it's a great way of getting both of those kits to hit MOQ because that's almost going to happen. Uh, I suspect if you split that up and had a numpad and ISO kit, both would be somewhere in the region of like 20 to 40. Uh, numpad would probably have 40 and ISO might have 20. So great to see that as well. 40s uh, and ortho is at 42, space bars at 91, and the Brahma is at 69 orders. So all doing really, really well. Um, it'd be interesting to see how that tracks over the coming weeks, but I think this is going to do quite well. How many it's, orders uh, did you say for the uh, the Rama cap there? Uh, 69. Nice. Yeah, nice. Good number. <laughs> nice. A pink, pink 69. Very, yeah, very, very, very nice. All right, shout out to the Sweaty Yeti who not only donates 250 bits, uh, he also gifts a tier one sub to 10 strong. So thank you so much for that. And uh, nice. it's just because we did accidentally miss it. Brick Cubed resubscribed uh, using uh, Twitch Prime for 17 months earlier. Thank you so much for that, man. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate that. Uh, I'm sorry if we've missed anything else or we've been talking, but we love you guys and thanks for, thanks for sharing as well. Yeah. So anyways, closing thoughts. I think this is, uh, this is a pretty good looking set with a pretty decent kit breakdown. Nice prices. Yeah. And I, I actually think the set looks pretty good. It's 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 so it's so different than every other um, colorway I've seen. So I, I think that that works out pretty well. Is twenty twenty going to be year of the pink sets? I I, I think it's going to be the year of the monochrome sets. We seem to be seeing more monochrome sets coming back, where your mod color and your alpha color are all uh, uh, are the same base color. So I think that's definitely going to be a thing. Uh, maybe we we should need more pink sets because there isn't enough pink in the world. So yeah. There you go, Jay thinks not enough pink in the world, guys. Bring on the pink, we say. All right. So, Absolutely. yeah, moving out of key sets onto uh, onto some switch news. Actually, we have the uh, the C three Tangerine Switch Round Two, and you might be thinking, well, why is that interesting? Tangerine switches have been on the market for years, and it's not that interesting. Uh, well, to you, I would say generally you'd be right, but this one actually has some interesting updates. So if you guys remember, the C3 Tangerines originally when they launched and up until very recently have been manufactured by Gateron and were effectively just a recolored Gateron switch with an updated spring, some updated colors, whatever. New name, and then bam, it's a new product. 
this time, this is uh, this is actually some things getting interesting. So they have changed factories. This is no longer a Gateron manufactured switch. They have moved over to JWK, who does do um, the marshmallows, the alpacas, and other uh, pretty recent switches. So uh, a lot of people have been liking those. They've decided to move over to that. So that's one thing I like quite a bit because I have been enjoying all the JWK um, manufactured switches that I've used so far. Yeah, I could. But if you look down here... It says the housing is UHMWPE, um, which is a material that our community has been playing with a little bit more lately. Obviously, we've seen the uh, the stems that came out not too yeah. long ago from um, from Ziz's brand. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, unfortunately. But uh, he uh, did. Uh, has. Yes, thank you. So he did put out some UHMWPE stems, and a lot of people have been liking them a lot. They're very very smooth pretty much frictionless so uh people have been liking this material now to my knowledge we've never in our community seen a switch housing made out of this material so that automatically makes this incredibly interesting it does yeah yeah uh, i'm really interested to see what these like out now now you say that that's uh, that's the housing material it, it is the, the the stem is still pom which pretty much yes. every switch on the market has a pom stem so yes. if you look at cherry or gateron stems those are typically pom it's very rare they're anything else so this is instead of having the uh the uhm uh stems this is a pom stem in a uhm housing so uh, really really interesting to see that uh i'm really intrigued to see how these feel really intrigued to see how these sound looking at the pictures it almost looks like uh the uh, the base might be a slightly different composition of plastic uh it's, it's difficult to see because there's no base shots but where you can see the uh the slider rails coming up it looks like it's it's almost frosted now that could just be a trick of the light uh, they may be the same all the way through. It's difficult to see. There's not really a good angle of them. But either way, I think it's going to be really interesting to try these out, see what they're like, and uh, and get them in a keyboard. And I'm really interested. To see. So one of the things I found with the UHM stems is they actually dampened the sound, and I wasn't a fan of that. Whilst they felt great, I wasn't a fan of how they sounded in typical uh, uh, housings. So I wonder if that changes by putting the housing out of that material and having that POM stem. I wonder if that will keep the clack and the thock. <laughs> And just give us some smoother, frictionless switches. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm really interested to try these out. Um, I'm going to talk to the key company. I'm going to try to get some of these in. They had they had uh, some in stock, but they had, like, I think it was, like, 10,000 or something. They sold out, like, 10,000, their first wave, like, instantly. Like, I just couldn't get there fast enough once I realized the stems were made of uh, UHM. So now they have since moved to a kind of a, a group buy slash pre-order kind of format where they do have, they do already have more switches coming in. So you can order them. They're just not necessarily in stock right now. But uh, $6 is going to be the cost for 10 switches. So, uh, you know, us math geniuses can uh, realize that that's 60 cents a switch, which is uh, yeah, not cheap, but it's within the realm of custom switch um, you know, boutique yeah. kind of stuff. This is nothing out of the ordinary, guys. And it does come with uh, your choice of two different spring weights slash colors because uh, that's that's going to change as well. So you have a light green stem at 62 grams and a dark green stem at uh, 67 grams. So very nice. Two options there. Same price. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying these out. Um, switches have always been my favorite part of the community. I think you can alter a lot of things about a keyboard just by altering the switch. So... Um, you know, new materials, whether they're for switches or something else, I think is, is something we should really be working towards. And I'm excited to try these. Yeah, I'm, I, I feel exactly the same. Like you, I've been pestering Jason to try and get hold of some of these. So I'm really excited to do a build as soon as we can. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to trying these out and seeing what they actually feel and sound like. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, that is actually going to wrap up our news doc for the day. So we're going to talk about our sponsors for just a moment, and then we're going to move into a Q&A like we always do. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and queue those up right now at any point in time using the at, at top clack tag. That'll help us see the questions a lot easier. So we definitely appreciate if you did that. And uh, yeah, so we will move on to that in just a second. Starting out our sponsors this week, of course, we have zealpc.net, a.k.a. Zeal Generation who has all sorts of key switches and other things in stock as usual. If you want some uh, some switches, this is going to be one of the better places in the market to go. You can have Telios, which are linear. You can have Zelios, which are tactile. You can have uh, Xylance, which are silent tactile. You can have Helios, which are silent linear. He's got you covered with pretty much everything, the whole lineup, lots of iterations of all of them. And personally, I think they're all pretty darn superb. Um, he's actually at CES right now, and just either yesterday or the day before, he released that uh, he does have a new switch coming out, and basically 
least on his Instagram, uh, it's going to be a clicky switch, which uh, Jay and I, you know, pondered <clears throat> but never actually thought would come. So, yeah, um, I, I I suggested it last week, kind of tongue in cheek, as kind of like, oh, what what what's the stupidest thing I could suggest? Oh, Zeal's going to do a clicky because he's always uh, he's always shied away from it and said that yeah. uh, uh, other other clickies were fine. Um, so I was really surprised by it. And do you remember before the show brought as well? I said there was something I wanted to add to the news doc and I couldn't remember what it was. This is what it was. As soon as as soon as yes. we loaded up the Zeal site, I I, I forgot about um, it. it sh- that should have been uh, like a teaser in our news doc or something, but. It, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> neither of us saw the clicky switch coming. Um, I would have bet money that it wasn't going to be a clicky switch, and then I would have lost. So um, I, I suggested it, it to be contrary. I didn't actually <laughs> expect it to be a clicky. When I said it, it was like really tongue in cheek, being contrary, just yeah. really yeah. not trying to expect it. And because we both, as soon as I said it, you were like, "No, it's not going to happen." I said, "Yeah, I know it's never going to happen. I'm just suggesting it because why not suggest it?" Sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, really interesting, and it's also looking like it's got an Alps click mechanism as well in an MX switch, which looks really, really interesting. So I think we do need to uh, to hit up Zeal when he's yeah. back from his trip and see if we can get hold. Zeal of Zeal has always been wonderful with providing us switches. Like whenever we ask, like, hey, you got something new come out? Let us check it out, and he's he's always more than happy to oblige. So um, love that. Going to have to try to get our hands on some of those. But regardless, if you are going to be buying some awesome premium keyboard switches, this is a great place to do it. And if you use zealpc.net slash topclack, that's an affiliate link. Doesn't cost you anymore, but it does give us a really large kickback, all things considered. So please consider that. And uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving over to our second sponsor tonight, it is the wonderful Mike and Gang at Novel Keys. So these guys have got a ton of stuff going on. As we just mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, they've got GMK Peach Blossom running in group by now, right now with that $100 uh, dollar base kit. Uh, it looks really rather nice. Uh, we really like it. It looks great. We also talked about Cat Lich earlier on as well. Uh, the Eskimojo set that is also running on Novel Keys and it's available right now. So you can pick that up group by which has those really really nice uh the alpha based legends which are lowercase instead of uppercase really different feel and look to your key sets so definitely do check both of those out uh, if you're looking for extras, GMK Metropolis has still got extras in stock. You can still pick those up right now, um, so you'll be able to take a look at it. And uh, GMK Pulse is also uh, uh, got uh, kits in stock, I believe, as well. So uh, if you're interested in some of those, you might be able to pick up some GMK Pulse kits too. Moving away from key sets, Mike has also got the general uh, selection of switches that he always has with springs and everything else. And when I say general selection, I mean basically every switch that's available right now. You can probably buy it through Mike or he'll have it at some point soon. Uh, so please do go check out those uh, those switch collections if there's anything you need or if there's anything that you want to try. And of course, if there's anything that's in stock that you want to buy on the store, please do use the code CLACKERS. That's C-L-A-C-K-E-R-S. Uh, and that will get you 5% discount on anything that's in stock doesn't account to uh group buy items but anything that's in stock like that and gk metropolis kits it'll work on that any of those switches that you might like it'll work on those as well so uh feel free to go and use that code yes absolutely next up we have info club over at kono.store who does have several things going on uh, the website isn't actually updated as of today but uh, they do have fuyu currently open like we were just talking about earlier with that uh, really nice kind of theme and colorway going on that i appreciate quite a bit Really, 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 really rich base kit, like we were mentioning earlier. A couple different, a um, couple different extra kits and Rama novelty as well. So if you want to get in on that, now is a good time. They also have, of course, as always, the Keystone pre-order up that they uh, they will be launching soon, hopefully. I'm trying to get my hands on one of these. I'm trying to track down someone at Info Club. Just send me one of these but uh anyways yep that is still up for pre-order right now as well as one thing that kono does that i like quite a bit is after a group buy is over they actually start pre-orders for it like automatically so if you missed out on any of the recent gmk group buys that they uh, they went through let's say for instance oh i don't know ursa or shark bait or umbra um they do have pre-orders open already for those so if you missed out on those group buys and you're like crap and now you're beating yourself up don't worry, you can still pre-order one of the extras immediately, which I think is pretty darn awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Jumping over to KBD fans now, uh, a couple of group buys that you can join actively on the site. You can pick up SA Mo Choco, that's in group buy. This is the pink, cream, and green set. Uh, lots of interesting uh, pastel colors there for you to take a look at if you're interested in those. Uh, as well as that, you can also look at the laser on switches. I used them in my PC canoe uh, build a couple weeks ago uh they are pretty nice they're a recolored gator on but they work really really well with gmk laser uh so if you are interested
interested in that, then please take a look at those as well. They also match really well, really well with GMK Skeletor as well. So if that's one of your favorites, please do check it out. Uh, as well as that, they've also got all of the standard entry-level kits that we expect from KBD fans, no matter what kind of kit you want, 60%, 65 40 TKL. They've probably got something either in stock or on its way that's going to suit the layout that you want. Now, these are great entry-level kits. They're great custom keyboards. The quality is going up and up and up. They're getting better and better all the time. Uh, and, you know, KBD fans is really looking out of the park at the minute for those entry-level kits. So please do go check them out if there's anyone that's interested in joining the hobby or you want a board to travel with or you want something for work or you just want to try a new layout there's definitely definitely opportunities there for you to do so uh, and the final thing as well is if you are looking for a board that uh, you don't care too much about for the uh, uh, the quality of it, then check out the B-Stock because you can try the board uh, generally at a, a reduced price because you might pick up one that's got a little bit of damage. It could be a great work board, a great travel board, something for you to carry around with you. There's often some really, really, really great bargains on there, you know, cases that are pretty cheap. Uh, at the minute, there's a lot sold out, but there's still lots available there as well. Uh, for example, you can pick up a Tofu 65% case for just $88 instead of being $109 it's 88 dollars you know so big savings go check it out yep absolutely and last but not least on our sponsors list for today is the key dot company who we were just talking about earlier with the gmk dark group buy which you can check out right there still have open right now it's gonna be open um the whole month so make sure to check that out it's gonna be uh one of our must buys jay and i both like this one quite a bit nice simple base kit price isn't terribly high uh, they do still have the Infinity Black on White and White on Black group I open that closes on January 23rd. This one's pretty good, especially if you like the uh, the Black on White versions. You can get a ridiculously compatibly, um, super compatible base kit for only 90 bucks. So that's pretty good. And then the uh, the White on Black version is a little bit more expensive at 120. And of course, just like we were talking about a moment ago, they do still have the C3 Tangerine switches, the round two versions with the um, the UHM housings, which is very very new, very unique. Hoping to check some of these out pretty soon. Those are still available in group buy as well. And uh, if you're more of a desk mat kind of person, they have the Thok desk mats to, uh, you know, satisfy some of you Topra users out there. We don't really get much Topra swag anymore, I feel like. So I, uh, I'm very appreciative that we're seeing this one. And last but not least, tomorrow they are launching Cat Drifter. So if you're a fan of the DSA set, but you like Cat better because Cat is a better profile, in my opinion, um, you should make sure to check that out as well. And yes, yeah. very nice. All right, guys, to the Q&A segment of our show, as <clears throat> per the usual, I don't see any questions at all. It's like chat died. I mean, usually the chat slows down a lot when we do the sponsors. Like That's <laughs> that's to be expected. People leave, chat kind of slows down. But we had no questions, and chat just died completely during sponsors for the first time ever. So, yeah, I had, I had to reset my uh, my where I watch the stream as well, so I've lost chat after I put the last message in there. You didn't uh, miss so anything. I've only got, I've only... You didn't miss I, I anything. Got, <laughs> since, since from my last post to to and I had to refresh then, uh, I start again with uh, Eskimo just saying cat the best profile. So I don't know if I did lose anything or if that was the next message. But no, that's, that's I, I didn't have access to the stream for like four minutes while I was doing that reset. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, okay, do, so some questions coming yeah, in. We got a couple now. Um, yeah, before we take off here, obviously, um, Dewey with a question for me: when you're when you update banner. Uh, I want to see more sexy keeps. Yeah, sorry about that. I forgot to update it last week. I think. Um, so we've had the, we've had the same banner for two weeks. I'm sorry. I will update it after the show. I did actually uh, just the other day went went through purple chat and I collected um, numerous pictures. So I actually have a little bit of a backlog now. So yes, expect that to be updated um, after the show today. Yeah, uh, and it's, it, it's Zwi as well. Is is how you pronounce it? Zwi. Yeah, Z Zwi. Oh, yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. I. Yeah. I. Okay, all right. I'm just a filthy American, so I, I pronounce things how they, they look, and, and that's uh, that gets me in trouble. <laughs> what, why, what, uh, what, what language is that supposed to be? Uh, I think it's uh, Korean and uh, Thai areas and around there. I've okay. got a friend from uh, Cambodia that's got that name, so that's just how I know. But yeah, uh, yeah, because I think. Oh, okay, okay, interesting. Yeah. You, you've I, probably I just been well, speaking the, to him in voice chat and saying his name wrong for two years, and he's just never. I don't. I don't think I've ever talked polite. to him in voice chat, but uh, I, mean, okay. I, I do talk to him like you know in, via text in the in the Discord a lot, and he's he's a great guy. But I I, I didn't know that's how it was pronounced. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I think... mean, it's it, languages. Some like other languages translate so poorly to English. I feel like 
Like, yeah. Because, like, in, in, you know, whatever language that's supposed to be, like, it, it makes sense. It probably makes complete sense. But when you translate it to English and you start with D-U-Y, how many people, how many Americans are going to be like, that's Zwi? Yeah, right. I, I get it. Yeah, um, yeah. I know. It's one of those things. Yeah, yeah. It's, Sorry uh, for my rambling. Just... My rambling. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think it's. I think. I think what it is. It's just the the fact that the letters we have we pronounce letters in certain ways, and yeah. because the characters similar in in the language, they use a similar character shape uh, to ours, but it might be a very different pronunciation. But yeah. Um, but if you think about any letters, you know, a lot of uh, French and Germanic languages use sim- similar uh, letters to, to what we do, some Latin letters. Uh, some of us like tweaked, but they have very different pronunciations as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's, do you know what it is? I think it's, it's just obnoxious English users that don't bother to learn second languages. That's what it is. Um, because we do the same in the UK. Most people over here can't speak a second language. Um, I speak a tiny bit French. My wife speaks fluent um, Spanish, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's we're pretty bad in the UK for speaking foreign languages. <laughs> All right, anyways, uh, T Zark is asking best polycarb CNC proto manufacturer. Whoa. Uh, you, you're going to struggle to get people to tell you which manufacturers they use. Um, uh, it, manufacturers not... are such a personal thing with the, uh, the yeah. designers and vendors in our community that like a lot a lot of people like know and realize they're using the same manufacturer as someone else for instance but like nobody really talks about it or says anything about it or releases names um but you know i i think the vast majority of them are are shops in shenzhen uh, yeah, the, the vast majority are in China. Some are in the EU. Um, some are in Asia. Some are, the, and I, I did allude to this earlier on. There's, there's some Russian opportunities coming up. Uh, but then we've got people uh, like the Honeyboard guys who are based in, you know, Canada. So uh, there, is, there is there is manufacturers all over the world. There's people uh, there's all over. Pe- yeah, there's, there's people in the US that do it as well. I think the uh, M0110, uh, the modern M1, uh, M0110, I think that was manufactured in the US in the end. So, you know, there's there, there, are, there are manufacturers all over. A lot of the boards you use today are manufactured in, in, in China. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's it, it, people are quite secretive over the manufacturers for obvious reasons. Uh, but there are... Uh, you know opportunities out there to be able to um uh, commission designs and things like that and and speak to people who might be able to help so reach out to designers reach out to vendors and they might be able to help point you in, in the right direction uh, there's a couple of makers who are actively involved in the community salvan is one i don't think he's actually worked with polycarbonate before i've never seen anything from his shop that's uh, been in polycarbonate but again he might be able to point you in the right direction as well and that's probably yeah and he's 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 super nice and super good at what he does um, all right. The sky is 256k asking did any cat set come out? Uh depends on what yeah. you mean by come out. I don't think any cat set other than alpha has been delivered. Um but there have been a couple group buys as of late. Um just like we mentioned a moment ago during our sponsor spot over on Novel Keys you can find Cat Lich um which is pretty amazing. I like that set quite a bit. Um Cat Oasis is launching at the end of this month. And cat, I think there was, I think there were like three or four cat sets launching this month. Actually, um, let me just bring yeah. up the docs. Sorry, you guys. Um, Drifter and yeah, yeah. Cat, cat Drifter opening tomorrow. Uh, cat Specimen <laughs> launching on the fifteenth, and Cam Wraith on the twenty seventh. So you have one, two, three, four, f- at least five key creative sets. Four of them being cat coming out this month alone. The, the, the only one that's actually been released, though, if you mean by come out, has been actually delivered to people is Cat Alpha. There hasn't been any of the cat sets delivered yet, although there's been a few group buys. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that goes. Yes, yes. Absolutely. All right. Um, Wilson1155 asking, Jay, how do you compare the feel of the Gasket 00 and profit since both mounting systems are quite unique interesting okay so uh it's a good question so i've never had both boards at the side of each other when i tried out the gasket a few a couple of years ago at chris wise house uh neither of us had a profit at that point <clears throat> uh we both have since got profits but we haven't caught up at, since then and, and and met face to face since then so i have never tried them both side by side so you have to bear in mind that my comparison here is going to be based on two separate instances in time uh using 
boards. One was quite a long time ago, and one was just yesterday. So you know, it, it, you have to bear that in mind. Um, the GSKT mounting is very different. So I don't think the mounting is comparable at all. So GSKT uses an OTD O-ring compression style mount. The Profit uses a four-point pin mount system, which is also seen in the KBD661, and those are the only two boards I'm aware of that have used it. Um, and in the profit, at least, the the mounting and the feel of the board is entirely dependent on the plate material that you use. If you use a firm plate, I have a carbon fiber plate for it, it feels very firm because it's mounted across the four points and then it's, uh, it kind of rests on the edge of the base piece because it's a seamless design. Uh, so it feels quite, quite rigid from that perspective. Um, if you use a half plate, so I have a nylon half plate in there, which is very soft, nylon's very flexible, it's, uh, it's, it's more of a rubber type material than it is for plastic that feels really soft and it also has a really weird subdued sound and, and i don't mean weird in a bad way but brian i know you tried the profit out and you you saw that it had a not as not idb levels of flex but it has certainly had some uh, flex and softness to it but the sound is really really subdued on that board because it was uh, very on, quiet on that on the nylon one specifically, the, the, actually the other way around, the carbon fiber one is actually really loud. It sounds really clacky and uh, uh, it's a very distinct noise. And I actually kind of prefer the carbon fiber plate because I prefer a type of thing, firmer type of thing and I prefer the sound as well. But the nylon plate on that is very soft, very flexible, but it really mutes it. It's very weird how uh, how, how that works. And that's only a half plate as well, but it almost, almost sounds like I've just got some squirty foam in there and I filled the board up with foam and it just... <laughs> it's very very interesting is so, the is the nylon plate uh set up the one that you brought to seattle yes the nylon plate yeah, yeah. i like that the, quite the, a bit it, it was it was it was soft and it was very luxurious but it was quite quiet yeah yeah uh, it's a great office board it's it, it's comfortable for typing long periods of time it's really quiet so it's not obnoxious the uh, the carbon fiber one is really really loud uh but that's it, it's like it's not weaving levels of loud but it's the it's weaving is on cool. another level in terms of acoustics <laughs> that's another re i forgot to mention that earlier when we were talking about it but the weaving sounds unlike anything you've ever heard in your life it's, it's a, like a machine gun. it really it's, is like a machine gun it's it's incredible <laughs> It's, yeah. it's crazy. The it's noise crazy. just it. it just sprays noise everywhere. It, nobody can get away from it. It's it, it has so much character, <laughs> so much yeah. character. Character is a great way to describe it. Um, so yeah, so I would say they're both very very different. I would n I would not suggest buying one or over the other because one was more superior because of its mount style. I think they're both really really unique and really different in their own way. Uh, the GSKT is the board we have to thank for Gaskets coming back into the community. In my opinion, um, I think if that board hadn't have been as secretive and successful and as highly regarded as it was we probably wouldn't have seen gaskets proliferate over the last 18 months as much as we have done so i'm really thankful to that board for that if nothing else uh the profit uh, i think it's coming back to group by in march late february march time on my Ooh. keyboard and a few other vendors um it's just a genuine genuinely nice design designed by one of the nicest most talented designers in the community max of cable card designs so yeah i, I think they're both uh, absolutely worthwhile um yeah definitely check them out so I think that's all I can say, really. Uh, next question comes from Noxygen. He says, don't know if this was ever asked, but what would you guys like to see in this hobby in 2020? Innovation, key sets, etc. Is this the same Noxygen that won the uh, the, the Clipper? I, I, I don't know. I, I assume so. Mm. I assume so. I don't. I only know one Noxygen. And I tried to, yeah. I tried to like uh, coordinate, like make sure it was, I, it was who I was thinking of in the Discord before. But apparently, mm -hmm. Discord recently had an update, which almost everywhere takes away everyone's number. Yeah. So, in, in like we normally do in a giveaway form, we ask for the Discord username and number to make sure that we we are getting the right person because a lot of people have similar or the same usernames in the, in our Discord because we have so many people now. So like we always have the number to like make sure it's proper. But when you search for people now, like. The numbers doesn't show up anymore so uh but we'll make sure it goes to the right person no worries but anyways his question sorry uh, i don't know if this, this was ever asked but would you guys like what would you guys like to see in 2020 innovation key sets etc um 2020 is going to be the, the year of pink key sets calling it now um <laughs> as far as what i'd like to see in 2020 what would we like to see jay in 2020 um, I think for me, um, more innovation, so more styling around the cases. So we saw that in uh, the TKL that we looked at earlier on today. Um, the names escaped my mind again. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I want to see more innovation in design and mounting methods. I think that's the big thing for me. I'd love to see that. Um, I think in terms of key sets, 
I, I want to see people playing with King differently and how they kit out, especially GMK, uh, seeing if we can work with GMK to look at different opportunities. So I know we talked about this at length a couple of weeks ago, but perhaps using uh, the buying power that the community has now got on really popular sets to include different regional keys depending on where you're based and things like that. That might be some opportunities there. I don't know how that would work. It would need working out, but uh, there's some opportunities there. I'd like to see that. Um, or just maybe change the way that MOQs hit and achieved and targeted because we see cat MOQ works in a very different way uh, and that's pro probably more conducive to a growing uh, community than uh, the standard kitting we see SP and GMK is, for example. So those are the two things I'd like to see from that perspective. Um, in terms of other stuff, I'm really interested to see how we're going to progress with switches. So we're now seeing, you know, UHM housings. We're seeing Alps clicky switches substituted into MX housings, which looks really interesting. Uh, that switch also sounds like a machine gun as well. I don't know if you saw the teaser, Brian, that Zeal put on his it's, uh, Instagram. It's pretty but assertive. It, it, it's, a certain, it's a great word to describe it, but <laughs> you you have a, a board full of those. It's going to sound like you've got a solenoid in there. It's going to be so. It's not. It's not a thock, and it's not a clack. It's it's a thump, right? That's what it is. Yeah. It's thump, thump, yeah. thump, thump. It's going to sound like a solenoid. So I think. Uh, seeing more stuff like that is really interesting to me. And if you can bring a, an Alps click leaf into an MX switch, can you do some Alps tactility in an MX switch? Because Alps tactiles are still the best. So. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I, I disagree about Alps, Alps Tactile still being the best, but that's a conversation for another time. Um, Personal preference, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. For, for most of that, you kind of just took the words right out of my mouth. Um, yeah, innovations I want to see. I think, for me, it's the same every single year. What I want to see has to do so much less with colors and design and overall aesthetic and more about the, the raw typing experience. Like, what can we change on keyboards? What can we do that just makes the experience so much different from other keyboards. And that's something I'm really interested in seeing and something um, you know, I'm hoping can, uh, can, can start taking shape with um, the upcoming Keystone keyboard from, um, yeah, from right. Input Club. So you know, things like that, they, like, I just wanna see things start changing fundamentally. We've been using the same exact switch design for 60 years or you know, 60 plus years. So it's like, Come on, like we can do something different here. Like let's let's see what we can do with analog. Let's see what we can do with you know the infrared and Hall effect sensing kind of technology. Um, there's there's so much more out there that we could be doing, but we're so caught in the past that we just the only thing we're really moving forward with is aesthetics and colors. And as of recently, mounting solutions and stuff like that. You know, now the the community is a little bit more opening to exploring new materials and new mounting methods and stuff like that. So that's that's always great to see, but. I want to see some fundamental changes in the actual overall user typing typing experience. I think that's going to be what really, yeah. really, really uh, sets uh, this year apart. Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, otherwise, I don't, I don't really care. Like, I, I got to be honest. Like, I don't really care about, like, key set colors. I don't care about the way most boards look. I mean, if they look good, cool. And if they don't, whatever. But... I, I want to know like what I'm going to feel when I type on the board. That's what matters to me because I, you know, I don't spend a ton of time looking at my board. I spend way more time typing on it, and like I, I want that, uh, I want that interaction to be different, you know, better, for lack of a better term. All right. Next question comes from Switch Keys AU, who asks, "Can you get the Streamlabs donate link down the bottom next to your other buttons? Makes it easier to find for for people." Uh, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. The Streamlabs donate link. Oh, oh, I, I see. So like under the stream. Yeah, so it pops. Yeah, so it pops okay, up in yeah. chat, but we can actually t put it into a button underneath the stream on Twitch, and people can click on that. Yeah, we we can definitely fix that. Yes. Good shout, Switch yep. Keys. Yep. Yep. I can uh, thank you, Steph. We'll sort that out. Yep. Very nice. Uh, uh, 256k with another question asking I've only ever used 45 gram HHKB and it feels too light I love the weight of Zelios V2 and heavier switches would 55 gram Topra be comparably heavy or am I better looking at BKE Redux domes that's a great question because I'm, I'm in a similar boat so 45 gram HHKB 45 gram Topra in general does feel a little light to me um, I like 55 gram way more than 45 gram. The tactility feels a lot more crisp. Everything feels a lot more meaty. I hate using that term with like switches and stuff, but like meaty, it, it feels way more substantial. 
um, when you use 55 grams. So I, I it, it kind of depends. Is 45 gram HHKB way too light for you? Is it just a little bit too light for you? Are there other things you don't like about it? I think we need to kind of explore the other aspects of the question first. But I think simply if the 45 gram is, you know, a little or moderately too light for you, then 55 gram is probably going to be uh, really, really good. If 45 gram is way too light for you, then 55 grams still might not be heavy enough for you. So maybe consider the, the BKE Redux heavies, which are heavier than 55 gram, or the BK Redux extremes, um, which are, as the name implies, pretty extreme. <laughs> I'm, I'm not usually a Topra fan, and I don't own any Topra boards. So, so just for the uninitiated, Brian, would you, is it a direct translation? So it's 45 gram HHKB, similar to a 45 gram switch. Is a, mm-hmm. is a 55 gram spring, uh, uh, sorry, HHKB, similar to, uh, to a 55 gram switch? Or does it not translate the same? Does it translate very differently? Uh, that's, a, that's a fantastic question, actually. I would say... So the first thing we have to keep in mind is when you see 45 gram Topra and 55 gram Topra, that's the force need to actuate a switch. So kind of similar in the same vein as like Cherry calls their MX Reds a 45 gram switch. That's not the compression force. That's Mm -hmm. just how much force you need to actuate the switch, not actually bottoming Mm -hmm. out like... Let's, let's be honest, almost the entire community does. Same with Topra. 45 gram actuation is actually like a 60-ish gram bottom out, maybe closer to 65. And 50, if I remember correctly, I actually I've tested this physically. Um, 55 gram Topra is like a 75 gram bottom out. So, okay. yeah, so Topra actually actuates like once you hit the bubble and you start the, the bubble compression... Um, that's where you get your actuation. And then you have to overcome the rest of the force if you want to bottom out, which is quite a bit more. So it it does translate kind of directly in the same way as an MX switch. You just have to keep in mind that those figures that Topra gives you are actuation and not bottom out. So... Makes yeah. Sense. Cool. So yeah, so, I, when you, like depending on who you're talking to, like you're talking like if you and I are just talking, you're like, hey, I love these 55 gram lubed um, Gateron blacks or whatever. When when you when I say that to you, you know that it's a 55 gram full compression spring. But if I say I'm loving this lubed 55 gram Topra, you you might not know that that's uh, that's not the bottom out force. So sure. Makes it's com- sense. conversational. Oh. But yeah, I, I think I'd have to know more on how you feel about 45 gram Topra to base um, the rest of that on. So you're always free to PM me. I'm always around the Discord. You can PM me at any time, and I'll try to help you out. There's also lots of other people in the Discord that are very, very helpful. So just make sure you join that. Link below, of course. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, next question comes from Long Schlong Boy. Great username, <laughs> by the way. Um, and he says, uh, he says, do you think breaking in switches is placebo? Or does it actually get smoother? If so, how long is the breaking period? I want to loop creams, but people have told me to break them in first. Fantastic uh, question, by the way. Yeah, it's a great question. Great question. Uh, so, so I think that creams are one of the switches that do uh, benefit hugely from breaking in. Uh, most switches do to some extent, some to a, a lesser extent. So, uh, in, in terms of the scale, I think if you look at vintage cherry switches, they do generally they do generally uh, need a bit of breaking in before you uh, modify them in any way, shape, or form. I think switches such as Zelios and Telios tend not to benefit from it because the housings are uh, inherently smoother anyway. So uh, I think it depends on the switch. Uh, in my opinion, creams do benefit from breaking in. I found that a week's worth of use in a hot swap board broke in creams quite nicely. Um, and then once lubed, they felt really, really nice. Uh, Brian, I don't know if you've experienced similar or if you t- uh, have any different experiences. I, I think I agree with you 100%. Creams definitely benefit... Um, from the break-in. Some switches benefit a lot. Some switches seem like they don't benefit at all. Like you mentioned, mm-hmm. zeal switches. I don't break in zeal switches anymore just because I don't notice a difference um, after lubing uh, between pre-break-in and post-break-in. Whereas something on like, I don't know, maybe like a mediocre vintage black or like almost any cherry switch or, or creams um, using an example here, um, I think do benefit dramatically um, yeah. from, from break-in. It's just like... Uh, it's it's kind of like um, lubing the switch the, the theory behind lubing switches too. It's like if a switch is good before it's going to be lubed, it's going to be you know com- comparably better after it's lubed. But if a switch sucks before it lubes, it's not necessarily going to be great after it's lubed. It's probably still just not going to be that great. It's just going to be you know lubed. So in, in the same way, I think break in is is kind of the same. But it really does change based on the switch in question. Some switches, I would say, yes, you need you need to hammer away on those for two weeks straight minimum, 
Other switches, I would say lube right out of the box. So yeah, always depends on the switch in question, but it's not a placebo. Break-in does indeed make switches smoother. And if you can get them smoother before you lubing, they're only going to be even better after you lube them. So that's the theory there. Absolutely. Fully agree. Uh, okay. Next question comes from Mr. Petro. He says, what uh, are your two favorite sounding boards of 2019? Assuming price is no object and I'm not allowed to say my board. So I think, I think that's fair qualification he's put on there. Uh, Brian, if you had to pick a favorite sounding board of 2019, what hmm. board do you think you'd pick? Interesting. I haven't really thought much about this. Favorite sounding board of 2019. I'm probably going to I'm probably going to stick with my my 2019 board of the year the Sirius. I think that if you get the setup right, that palm plate really is just wondrous um, in terms of acoustic properties in my opinion. So I think I think that's got to be my that's got to be my best sounding board of the year. It's so hard because there 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 are a lot of boards that I've actually gotten this year that I think sound fantastic. Like even this even this $100 uh Perry 60 V2 is is I I think quite nice in terms of acoustics because of the the very kind of rudimentary gasket mount, I guess you can call it. Um so yeah, uh those two, I don't know if those are my top two. Sorry about my camera, guys. It's kind of having a mind of its own right now. Um I guess I could say Kep Kepler, Kepler the Kepler setup that I have right now with the Palm Plate and the Zelios, I think is spectacular. And I know that you can't say you're J01, but because the J01 and the Kepler both have uh, effectively the same mounting solution, I feel like by default, the J01 and the Kepler, I think both sound fantastic. So, those yeah, are the. The, the, they are both interesting. Now, I I don't own a Kepler, so I won't I won't say that either. And and it'd be unfair for me to pick pick my boards. So Petrov's right on that. Um, I think if I was going to pick pick, uh, there's probably a couple of highlights. Uh, one one for me is the the J uh, uh, sorry the J A O six sorry if I get my letters right the J A O six which is also known as the J eighty uh, which is a TKL that's think, a PCB mounted solution yeah. I think they call it the J eighty um, now in their their newest run yeah yeah so the newest one is called the J eighty the run I have is called the J the J A O six um, uh, but the board's the same, it's identical I think there's some slight revisions in colour but other than that, it, there's nothing else that sounds really, really interesting it's a really unique mounting position I'm a big, big fan of that board um, and I think it sounds great but in, in, in terms of sound I think if I was going to give it to any one board of the year I'm really impressed with the, the sound profile that I get from the Profit um, I think it sounds really unique and the, the way that the plate changes the sound so much it, it's more than what you expect on the board so a lot of boards will sound different with different material plates in, but the way that that one just because of the way the pin mounting works in the corners sounds so different from one plate material to another and the way the whole feel of the board chain is it, 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 it's night and day the difference between the two it's 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 it, it's unbelievable that a board can be changed so much by just changing one element and the, both the builds i have have exactly the same pcb they have exactly the same switches that will loop in exactly the same way with the same stabilizers and it's it's like two different boards. It's so bizarre how different they are, it, That's, it, and it's really, really interesting. J just while I have it fresh on my mind, because you're talking about it, I think that I I really really hate when people try to dictate sound based on one element of a build. When really it's yeah. the, the the full build. Like so many people are like, this switch sounds bad, or this material sounds bad. When in all actuality. You don't know how anything sounds until you until you actually do it. The proper way to test stuff like that is to have the same the same setup, the same controls, and where you're only testing one variable at a time. So, like when you have uh, like when you have the same board side by side, like that's I don't know. It, it, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine when someone's like, "Oh, I hate the way I this mean, this switch sounds," and I'm like, "Well, have you tried it in all of these scenarios?" And they're like, "No, I've only tried it on this particular board and setup." And it's like, "Well." How do you really yeah. know what it sounds like when you have no frame of reference for the rest of the uh, controls that you're trying to use? Well, exa exactly. I mean, it, it's not just the board. So many things can affect sound as well. So it, it, it's not just the switch. It's the way you lube it. Uh, it's not just the plate. It's the material it's made from and the way it's cut and the way it's mounted. And then with the mount, it's not just the mounting style, but it's the, the way that that mounting style is done, the type of screws that you, you use uh, in terms of, say, nylon or aluminium or steel or whatever that can affect it. It's also the gaskets, the different materials can affect it in different ways, the way the gaskets are positioned. But even if 
you take the board away from it, that it even things such as your environment your can desk? change the sound of it. Yeah, are you using you, a, a, you, a mat? Are you using a desk mat? Are you, how thick is your yeah. desk? What's your desk made out of? You know, what, what are the acoustic yeah. properties of your room? Everything changes this. Everything. So many, Absolutely. so many variables that nobody you, you takes into consideration. Typing. Everyone, everyone's just like, this switch yeah. sucks, or this material sucks, this plate sucks. You, you, like... you, you take one of Nathan Kim's typing tests. So, so he's done that really, really famous holy pen uh, uh, clipper typing test, which Flip was done on, before he moved. Uh, sorry, Fjell, sorry, yeah. Uh, so, so he's done, it was before he moved house. It was in his old place. And everyone says that's the sound of a holy panda, but it's not. That's that's the sound of that board in that room with that build and those specific uh, controls and uh, lubes and whatever else has been put together. It's that specific combination of all those things put together in one package. I guarantee, if I built a board and recorded the sound here uh, that used exactly the same lube and exactly the same switches and the same board, and I put it on my desk, it would sound different. Yeah, because it would. Yeah, it just you could guarantee you it could would. literally take that exact board from him. He could ship that to you. You could do a typing test, and it would sound infinitely different. Infinitely different. So yeah, a lot of a lot of things to consider there. So I, I really I really hate when people try to take the sound approach to uh, one specific thing. Like oh no, Telios always sound bad. It's like that's not the case. Like yes, as a naked switch against another naked switch, you might prefer the other naked switch over the Telio, for example, or whatever. But like. I've, I've had lots of Zeal switches that sound incredible in lots of different scenarios, and some that sound bad. And a lot of it was just because of the setup. You know, you, you, gotta, give, you gotta give switches and stuff, like the environments, to thrive in if you want them to sound good. Yeah. You can't just when, expect when it, a board to sound good because of a switch. Absolutely. One of, one of the boards that, that I really enjoyed building the last year was the Ion 165. And I think that board's going to sound great when I build my personal one. But the one I built on stream didn't sound particularly good because of the way the switches have been looped. And it, it was just, I mean, and that's just my personal opinion. I, I think uh, uh, I built it actually for Baron, who who uh, is one of the uh, guys behind the board, part of Smith and Rune. Uh, he likes his switches that way, and that's fine. But to me, if you overloop a switch, you reduce the sound profile of that switch too much. And, you know, it, it, it didn't sound as good as it could do to me. But I'm absolutely confident that that board will sound great if I put switches looped to my particular taste in that board. So, you know, all of those things do combine. And at the end of the day, what sounds good is personal preference. I might think something sounds good that you hate, for example, Brian, or the community hates. Yeah. The community might think something that I say sound good does sound good. And we might just disagree. And it might be that we both have something that the community agrees sound good and we dislike of each other's you know so it, it, it's all personal preference at the end of the day but um so, so many things affect the sound profile of a board and the easy way to test this is use a board at home listen to how it sounds take it to work use it at work and i guarantee it'll sound different in a different environment yeah put it on a different desk different material put a desk mount under it if you don't normally use a desk mount put a desk mount under it and it'll be yeah. way way different uh by, by quite a bit yeah put different yeah, caps know, on it all you have to do is replace the caps board sounds totally different yeah if you if you put pps caps on that every board's going to sound massively different if you put <laughs> cat alpha on that it's going to sound different to gmk if you put sa profile on it's going to sound way different because sa just sounds really echoey naturally just because of the shape of the keycap so everything's going to sound and affects the, yeah. you know affects it so much yeah so everyone uh, out there sure stop Stop saying X sounds bad <laughs> when it's so much more complicated than that. Please, I'm begging all of you. If there's one thing I want to see change in 2020, I think that would probably be the one thing I want to see changed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Petrov, I know, I think I think you think that the Space 65 is one of the best sounding boards. It's high on my list. It does sound really good. And again, I think that's just carbon fiber naturally um, uh, enhancing the the, the sound profile of the board itself. I think that's what you experienced there with that. Uh, it's a very clever design internally uh, from that perspective, and it's uh, um, it's a nice board. But uh, sadly, it doesn't make it into my rotation often enough. It's uh, it's not something I use, sadly. But uh, it's on the shelf somewhere behind me, I think. But yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, Ten Strong says Ten twenty-four strong. hour. Uh, it's yeah. I I, I have soon. yeah. Yeah, I don't want to make excuses because there are really none. Um, we're we're bad and we should feel bad. That's basically where this is right now. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard for Jay and I to coordinate times together because obviously he's in the UK, I'm in the US, and we have different working schedules and hours. So 
it, it can be tough to coordinate trying to plan uh, an event that we're trying to make way more than just any other 24 hour stream there's a lot that's that we're trying to have go on here so it, it's it's hard to actually coordinate this right now but i i do want to see it happen soon we just need to yeah, uh, we need to we need to agree on a day and, and finalize the uh, we just need to get it done yeah, yeah. Get, we, we, get just, it done. we both just need Absolutely. to sit down and get it done basically is what needs to happen yeah. <laughs> we will do it we will yeah, do it so yeah. uh 256 cases uh, thanks brian that was really great to hear so uh, thank you for your explanation earlier on yes. saturn og comes back with a question he says are cherry mx silent black housings the same as cherry mx retooled black housings uh, as far as I know, the housings are the same. It's just the stem that's different. I don't think there's a difference in the housing. Uh, so I used to think that as well, but I've I've used I've used retooled cherry switches when they first started doing the retool, and I've also mm -hmm. used the uh, the cherry silent switches, which should by default also be um, retooled. But uh, and I've taken I've taken the silent stems out and I put uh, I put like Gateron red switches red stems in. It was first pretty specific sure. colorway project um but they were awful like really really bad um <laughs> so I, I i don't know the, the, the housings were like really terrible because the gateron the gateron switches that i pulled the, the red stems from were, were fine like it was like any other gateron switch but i don't know if it was just putting those particular gateron stems into the cherry silent housings but it was awful they were so scratchy um, whereas at the time <clears throat> the uh the retooled normal cherry mx blacks that you could get were great it was still part of the first batch, and you know everyone loved them. They were very smooth, very uh, very easy yeah. to break in, and took well to lube. It was it was good. Okay, well I have some of both here, so Sanoji, I'll try and have a look if I remember, and uh, if you watch my build stream on Sunday, I'll try and have a look and see if I can compare live on stream because I've got both of the switches in a drawer just here, so I can take a look. At yeah, that. it's worth noting. It, it really could just be batch by batch because you got to remember that Cherry Silent switches came out in. 2014 i think that's when like that's when cherry silent switches launched but we didn't really get the quote-unquote community retooled blacks until what 2016 2017 uh 2018 when we got the retooled blacks yeah really it was that recent yeah so okay so yeah. yeah so there, there was there obviously the molds were still being used for the silent switches for for years um yeah. bef before that i don't know if they're on different molds or not but Obviously, you know, the, the silent molds have had been used for quite a while, but uh, the retooled blacks that we as the community know as retooled blacks, um, the, you know, the as as they did more and more batches, the mold starts to wear down more and more. And if you like if you buy, quote unquote, retooled blacks right now, they're awful. They're not going to be good. They feel terrible. But if you were lucky enough to get in the first batch or two when the molds were fresh, uh, they were great. So yeah, th there, that, was, there was a period of about six months where retail blacks were spot on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I feel like something similar could have happened to the MX silent molds, where in 2014 they might have been pretty good, but you know, as time okay. went on, 2016, 2017, 2018, now when you buy the same silent switches, if they're using the same mold, they don't feel very good. So. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I can have a have a look at and, and see if I can do some comparison between the two housings on Sunday for you, uh, if I remember to sort that out. But uh, I'll try. Um, so yeah. Okay. Uh, next question comes from two fifty six K again. He says, "Is there any way to get fifty five gram Topra domes in my HHKB other than gutting a real force?" Nope. As far as I know, you have to get nope. them right. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to have Unless. Them. I mean, the only alternative would be to buy them secondhand from somebody that has already gutted a real force. Uh, the bottom line yeah. this year is a, a real force needs to be gutted to get those 55 gram domes. Assuming you mean genuine Topra 55 gram domes, because you can buy Niz 55 gram domes um, aftermarket. You can just buy the sheets straight from Niz themselves, and then you could put those in there. Th again, that's not genuine Topra, and it does not feel the same. In, in fact, in my opinion, I think 55 gram um, Niz domes, for example, uh, feel lighter than 55 gram Topra domes by a lot. Like 55 gram right. Niz domes feel like 45 gram Topra to me. And the tactility is a little different too. It's not really that comparable, but uh, that could be another option too, because those are really cheap. So you could test it out for, for pretty cheap. But 55 gram domes, yeah, you gotta, you gotta either get a real force or you gotta find someone that has. 
Cool. Uh, Wilson, Wilson eleven fifty five. Yeah, he says are old C three tangerines housing the same as Gator on Black Milky Top? Uh, and what do you think of Gator on Black Milky Top? Yeah, so the the the, the original tangerines were a black base with uh, with the the Milky Top, uh, and they had orange stems. That was the original tangerine switches, and they were just basically a a, a Gator on Black housing with a coloured stem and a different spring. Um, so, so that's what they were. Uh, I do think that the milky tops are nicer than the clear tops on Gator on switches. I significantly prefer the sound profile of them, and I think they look nicer too. Cool, sounds good. Yeah, I um, hmm, I, I think they're I think they're good. Yes, I think I think black bottom milky top Gateron switches are probably the best out of the Gateron lineup. But here's the problem yep. I have with um with the previous tangerines as well as most recolored Gaterons. They are twice as expensive. Or, no, actually, sometimes they're upwards of three times as expensive, depending on where you're looking, um, for basically the same switch, just a different color and an updated yeah. spring. So that that was always my problem. Because you, you for forever now, you've been able to buy Gateron switches for like 20 cents a piece. Like, but d depending on where you're looking, you're going to find them for between 15 and 25 cents a piece. Like, that's just how Gateron switches are. But when you start looking at original Tangerines and a lot of the other recolored Gaterons, they're 50, 60, 70 cents a piece. And the only difference really is the color. I mean, you could buy, you know, the Milky Top Black Bottom Gateron switches, the stock ones with the stock springs, buy some new springs, buy whatever weight spring you want, whatever kind of property you want, throw them in there, and you have a comparable switch for a much cheaper price. So that's that's always kind of been my thought on it. I think Gateron makes great switches for the money. I think as far as value goes, it's about as good as it gets in terms of pure value. Um, but yeah, I think recolored Gateron switches generally aren't very good value. Yeah, I think it depends on what you put value on because I, I think I, I agree from a bang for buck perspective, but there's certainly something to be said for value of max, yes. maxing, matching builds. So for example, I used laser on switches to but with laser and that works really nicely and it's you know themed build it it works in that context so there is that element to it as well if, if that's something that uh, appeals to you uh, other than that i agree I, I i had them last week i just bought 400 500 600 i can't remember what the number was uh, just gator on black bottom milky top switches because they're just really good basic switches yeah uh, and they're actually fantastic for um stem swaps as well so they're really good at taking stems from other uh from other switches as well so if you've got stems lying around from a previous build that it's just nice to put them in those switches and they generally work well so yeah uh definitely something to to look at uh next question comes from uh Dadge. he says uh, what do you think about breaking in topra again lots of topra questions out of my wheelhouse brian over to you yeah, well, I, I mean, I, wheelhouse or not, I feel like this it's its the same thing as with MX. I, it? It's the same I, thing I, with anything. Like, you rub two materials together, they're going to get smoother. This is this is just basic uh, science, really. I mean, it, it's the same thing with Topra. I mean, though it doesn't work exactly the same way, you're still trying to get something smoother by rubbing materials together. So, in, that, in the essence of that, yes, I would say breaking in does indeed help with Topra. Okay, cool. Uh, next one, next question comes from Perms. He says, "What software do you use to design your boards? I have some ideas, but no, don't know where to start." Uh, personally, I use Fusion 360. If uh, if I'm doing CAD, now my CAD skills aren't the best, and I have uh, some CAD gurus who help me out to do the actual technical stuff uh, in CAD where I lack those skills. And most of my designs actually tend to be on pen and paper. I do a lot of isometric drawings uh, on lined graph paper and use the correct measurements and everything else and do cutaways and all that kind of stuff. That's how just my process, I do that first. And I end up with maybe, I don't know, 70 or 80 drawings uh, showing all the different elements of the board from the angles that should be used and what cross sections, vertical drawings, overhead shots, uh, isometric angle projections should look like how that should all work and then I turn that into a rough shape in CAD and then I get someone to help me do the fine detail in CAD because I just I don't have the CAD skills to do it but uh, Fusion 360 all the way yeah I have even less CAD skills than Jay by a wide margin so I would outsource all of my design work personally so <laughs> I have no idea uh, on any of the software basically uh, it's definitely not my wheelhouse um, quick shout out to uh, the Sweaty Yeti, though, who did donate another 250 bits, and he donated $5 on top of that. We will make sure that $5 goes to Alcoholic Beverages uh, for Talk Clack. 
because that's what I think the link says, right? It says buy us a beer or something. Yeah, buy us <laughs> so a beer. I, yeah. I gotta start setting. I gotta start setting every single dollar of that aside to make sure it actually does go to uh, to alcoholic beverages. And nice. Then, um, nice. <laughs> uh, the Rage and Asian did just resubscribe tier one for twenty one months in a row. Thank you so much, Ray. Nice. You know I love nice. you. You are my boy. And uh, Neurowinter also resubscribed at tier one for thirteen months with a heart. So thank you so much, guys. Very very kind of you. We are uh, we're coming up on the end of our stream here. We're just uh, just finishing up a few questions in the Q and A. Should we do the next ones quick hit like, like yep. flash style questions? We try yep. to get through them. Lightning round. Let's go. Classic. The, the best thing about classic top clack lightning round is it never turns out like a lightning round. Only it only works for the first question, and then we start getting lost and rambling. Again. <laughs> so, but let's let's try to stay. Let's try to actually do a real lightning round for the questions here. Uh, Jay, go. So okay. here we go. What's the next question? Teal What's Technic question? asking, can you tell me your thoughts on layered acrylic boards in general as far as acoustics look and anything else that would generally uh, across them? So acrylic layered boards, I'm actually using one right now. I think in terms of uh, in terms of value, in terms of what you get for your money, it's generally a very good idea. Um, this particular board is a little bit different from other layered acrylic boards because this is actually a version of a gasket mount. So this one actually does feel and sound quite good for the price. Um, but I would say not necessarily all of them are like that. But uh, good for the money is my answer. Yeah, okay. My answer to that is uh, buy them because I've got acrylic kayaks. I've got acrylic rain. I've got an acrylic Lubiganti. I'm going to be building that in a couple of weeks. Uh, bang for book. They are really good value for money. I think TX have done some recently as well. So I think they look good. Acoustics, it's easier to tune them because you have more options in terms of putting more or less layers in. Uh, but uh, you're never going to have the same sound as what you get from, say, a polycarbonate or an aluminium case. It's going to be very different in terms of sound. But that doesn't mean it's going to be bad. Um, all right, leave it. Cool. Yep, there we go. All right, Wilson1155 with our next question. It's how you work around those switches, not blaming the switches. Okay, so follow-up to our uh, our switch conversation earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Ten Strong asking, Jay, what material do you think the 1.2 OG uses for that rubber? Silicone? I think it is some sort of silicone. Yeah, it's not, uh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's not natural, it's not rubber, I think it's silicone, yeah. Fantastic. All right. So uh, our next question comes from Clavier. How the hell does Jay survive doing this at 4 a.m.? Uh, two pints of coffee and then sugary drinks. Yep. Um, yeah. It, it would be better if we had the Ock mug, but apparently not. <laughs> Ock mug's retired. It's now the uh, the bright orange Le Creuset mug. That's, uh, that's what we're going to go. Going all French. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, uh, 256K with our uh, our most recent question, actually. We're a little caught up here. How different does polycarb board sound compared to metal? Uh, pretty different. It's generally... Yeah. You, you, I think you're actually more experienced with polycarb boards than I am. So how would you answer this question, Jay? Uh, yeah, so I think the, uh, the sound is softer. It's not as harsh. There's less resonance throughout the case. So it does sound very different. I actually built a aluminium Singer V3 on stream before Christmas, I think it was October time, uh, and I compared that to a polycarbonate version of exactly the same board with the same layout. So you could go and check those out and listen to the sound differences between them. I don't think they used exactly the same switches, so they are going to sound a little bit different anyway. But if you listen to the general timbre of the board under the, in the background, the kind of uh, underlying sound and how, uh, how things echo or don't through the board, you'll kind of get a feel for it. Uh, but PC absorbs a lot more sound in terms of waves than uh, than, than aluminium would, so it's, it's it's generally a little bit deeper. Uh, generally has more um, you have you have less resonance uh, in in PC cases because the case soaks up that resonance, um, and uh, it's generally a different sound profile. I'm a really big fan of PC boards. Actually, I've got quite a few, so yeah, I really like. Them. Yeah, I've noticed that's kind of um, that's kind of just overall as a, a plastic versus metal. Um, it is ca yeah, case yeah. case argument there is like plastic is just so much better at absorbing sounds whereas metal generally is better at reflecting it back to you or towards whatever it's angled at yeah and i think you can do a lot with metal to make boards sound good like we talked about you think the kepler sounds great and there was the space and the profit and the, i i you know it sounded it was yeah. around that kind of stuff so i think it depends on what sort of sound you're going for as to what to 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 go as to which material to choose but polycarbonate is not a bad thing by any means it's a really premium plastic it's difficult to mill it's you know in my view it's it's well worth buying the polycarbonate boards i've got quite a few i've got the singer which i've actually just sold langlandia should be getting that in the next couple of days it's 
sold that one actually, uh, which is rare for me. I don't often sell buds, but there we go. Uh, but I've got the uh, E6.5. Uh, I've got a couple of other buds as well. I, I, I mean, I think I've got maybe four or five polycarbonate buds at the minute. So um, definitely check that out. One thing I'm actually really interested in is actually having alu topped buds with polycarbonate bases. The TMO50 is a really good example of that. I want to experiment more on some designs of mine in the future with doing that on seamless design cases. So uh, maybe watch the space for that because, yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm going to be looking at this year. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Mog Genius asking, opinion on half plates. I think the flex will be cool, but I also think I'd miss the sound of a plate. Um, it's a trade-off. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's a trade-off. Some people like that PCB mount uh, sound, though, like, um, like Jay was talking about with the J80 earlier. That's a... All the people that I've talked to that own that board love that board. It's great. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, so trade offs, but obviously it's, it's situational. It's personal preference, depending on what kind of sound you like personally. Um, Wit Sellers asking any thoughts on more sustainable materials you are interested in seeing boards made in? Interesting. Yeah, so there's a couple. I've had a couple of thoughts on this, and someone asked me something similar in a, in a different chat a couple of days ago. So I'm re you can get recycled plastic blocks that are CNC millable. Uh, so I would like to see someone in the community do something with that. Uh, to try and get one of these recycled plastic blocks. And interestingly, they're kind of like all different colors, and it's like kind of speckled depending on what plastics have been in it. So they're all very different. Um, and you just mill it like you would polycarbonate. So I would really like to see someone do that. The other one is cardboard, but not the type of cardboard you're expecting, not cardboard from a box, but you can get this really dense compressed cardboard material, uh, which again can be CNC milled like wood. It's almost like plyboard. Um, I'd like to see some and do stuff with that those are the two materials i think that are uh, quite interesting cool there we go i'm going to touch on a couple quick questions that uh that come from people that forget to tag us um barbecue kimchi asking is inventor a good program for making keyboard designs never I tried it sorry i don't know about it either so unfortunately got nothing there dash asking what about the effect on the domes he's referring to the uh, the break-in of the topra as far as the domes are concerned i don't think the domes are really going to change much at all Domes, I feel like, only really change much after really long periods of use versus uh, short periods like break-in. So obviously the, the dome's not going to really break in, per se, in the same way that uh, the slider slash housing will by rubbing against each other. Because, um, yeah, the dome, the dome just collapses from the slider up on top. So there's nothing really to break in besides just the, uh, the properties of the rubber itself, which I've never really tested, but it's kind of thought of as uh as not necessarily a myth but it, it's kind of just agreed upon that older topra boards feel crisper feel snappier uh the more they're used i've kind of felt this way ever since i've owned a um or ever since i did own an hhkb pro one from 2004 it was absolutely incredible and unlike every any, any other hhkb i've ever tried and i've tried at least five to ten hhkb pro ones and this one was by far the best stock dome stock stock slider stock housing stock springs it was just another world experience and uh, I th ever since then I kind of get the feeling that uh, it could just be that uh, that age of the rubber or that usage that could make a really big difference and I liked it a lot so but I'm not gonna tout any of that as fact because no one really knows in the community it's just kind of accepted that that's the way it is. Um. Okay. So yes. Uh, cool. We had, uh, we had one more, Technic drops. Dropped six bits on us. Thank you very much, Till Technic. Five bits, sorry. Uh, really appreciate those bits. Keep them coming, guys. Thank you. Yep. Thank you so much. All right. So I think that's almost it. All right. Nathan Alpha Man with another question. Domes get really effective if you put silencing rings on them. So not a question, but following up on that. Uh, e... Well, the... why would the domes get affected? Because the silencing rings goes on the, the slider. The slider, the, the silencing ring never actually touches the dome. Um, I mean, I, I, I guess that would make more sense because the silencing ring pushes the slider down a little bit more, so the dome is always, like, very slightly compressed. Um, so I, I guess I guess that could uh, that could go along with that. Interesting. Yeah, okay, I don't know if I'm about to, to comment, but yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I've, never, I've never had a silenced Topra board long enough to be able to tell the difference on whether that affects it or not. Um, Makes sense. All right, so let's, uh, we are caught up on questions. So fantastic. 
All right, so we are going to be heading out for the day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream as much as we did. Thank you all so much for all the... So many subs and bits today, and the gifted subs. Oh, it was so much fun. You guys are unbelievable, stuff. and it's because of amazing people like you that we're able to do the things that we do. So we are forever thankful for it. Trust us. Um, below the stream, you're going to find links to lots of different things, including but not limited to our official Discord, as well as our official YouTube. So make sure you go subscribe to the YouTube and you go to the Discord and you join there and you come talk about keyboards or cheese or video games or whatever you want. There's something for everyone there. We try to be very accommodating. So, uh, yeah. Uh, upcoming build streams, Jay? Or anything else? Uh, yeah, I've got a build this week and I'm going to be building the NK65 that I gave away to Demonaz. Uh, I think it was Demonaz, let me check. Uh, Demon H said, uh, "Yeah, I, I gave away the that of my on my last build stream of last year. I think it was just before Christmas. Uh, so I'm going to be building that for him, uh, and we'll also be finishing off the number two. So I built a number two last week for Mike. Uh, made a slight error in soldering one of the switches and didn't have my desoldering equipment to hand. So that's all fixed. I've actually got the board. It's in front of me now. I've been using that today to make sure everything's working just fine. Uh, so we'll be finishing off the J score on the on the number two. I'm also going to build Mike's second plate tomorrow." not on stream uh, with some inks and uh, compare that as well because I'm not sure that the MX clears we used in the original build really give it a fair um, a fair comparison for the J-score considering the switches we use in other builds so uh, we'll try both builds out we'll see how that goes I'll try and remember to do the uh, the switch test for Saturn uh, around the retooled MX blacks and the silent MX blacks uh, then we'll build the NK65 and then I'll get it shipped off to, uh, to Demon HZ so uh, yeah, looking forward to that stream. It should be quite a, quite a good stream. Really interesting one. Nice. Yes. Uh, I have a few things coming in. I have sort of unofficially reopened build services, and I've had a couple people reach out to me already, and I've uh, and I've agreed to take on those projects. So I do have some upcoming build streams, but uh, I don't know exactly when. It kind of just depends on when things are actually shipped to me and when they arrive. Again, Behind the Keyboard is starting very, very soon. I have... Um, I have some, some great ideas for that. I've reached out to a couple pretty interesting guests that I'm going to keep a secret of, but uh, I think uh, you guys will definitely enjoy them, assuming they agree. Uh, we'll start waiting on some confirmation from that, because some people don't like to be interviewed, apparently. But uh, I'm, I'm pressing for it, guys, because I think uh, a couple of these are going to be really, really good, and you're going to like them a lot. Um, shout out cool. to the Sweaty Yeti, who did just sub for uh, Tier 1 for 12 months. That's thanks for the stream, guys. Have a good night. Thank you very much, man. I hope... Uh, I, we really appreciate all the bits and all the subs and stuff, guys. Really, 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 really do. Um, I hope you yeah, guys that, all have a fantastic night. That that opening and train at the beginning was, was really... That really was good. insane! Really yeah, I need to... Once, once we're done here, I'm going to go read up on the hype train thing, because I, I have the... Yeah, I've, I've got the link. I have it open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we're going to go... We're going to go do that. Rob on behind the keyboard? That, he's one of the people I'm going to... Trying for <laughs> Rama hates interviews though. It's so hard. I'm gonna maybe I can try to convince Kate. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, maybe we'll get see. both of them there, together. There's there's a few there's a few really high profile people that have like somehow avoided interviews by everyone. But I'm gonna try to get them on just so uh, just so we can do it. But again, I'm gonna keep uh, I'm gonna keep most of those a secret because I think it's gonna be more fun that way. Cool. Sounds good. All right, guys. Cool. Right then. All right. Yep. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your night or morning, depending on where you are. If you're uh, if you're crazy like Jay and you're you're up at four a.m. right now, then uh, four forty six a.m. Four forty six a.m. Then shout out to you because you guys are uh, the the real troopers here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so for the rest of it, make sure you tune in on Sunday for Jay's build stream, and of course tune in next week, same time, same place, Thursday at six p.m. for the next episode of Top Clack and. Hopefully sometime uh, before then I will uh, get a very nice episode of Behind the Keyboard out for you guys. So, all right. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. See you guys. Mwah. I'm going to kiss you all.